Hey guys welcome back to my channel. What if Naruto had dreamed to become Pokemon Master instead of Hokage? Naruto x Harem. Movie. As far as one can remember or acknowledge, there are numerous realms and dimensions inhabited by living beings, some bear similarities between each other while others sharply contrast which makes them very unique. One of such worlds is inhabited humans alongside creatures called pocket monsters more popularly known as Pokemon. These mysterious creatures are said to be capable of manipulating all sorts of powers known to humanity and they come in many shapes, sizes and even forms. These magical creatures can be found in every corner of the world where one would find themselves, soaring high in the skies, swimming along with the currents and seas, climbing along the craggy mountains, animating the green forest and grasslands, heck even the sprawling cities are teeming with them. As long as time immemorial, humans and Pokemon work together in harmony. For some, Pokemon are friendly playmates, and cooperative workmates, while others would sometimes band together and do battles against those similar to them. However as there is good, there are also evil. Unlike some humans who wish to live in harmony with Pokemon, there are others who seek to control Pokemon for their own selfish ambitions which puts the very balance of the world itself at risk. But now a new story which will eternally be remembered in the Pokemon world is about to begin. It all starts in a small town called Pallet which is located at the western side of the Kanto. One night when many people had returned to their homes to rest after a hard day's work, a brown-haired woman wearing a blue dress with a white short-sleeved jacket and matching shoes was walking down the dirt path towards her home while enjoying the night breeze, this woman's name is Delia Ketchum. Suddenly she heard rapid footsteps from behind her and turned around to see who or what it is. Turns out it's a quadruped rodent Pokemon with purple fur and large front teeth, a Rattata to be precise. Delia was confused when the Pokemon stopped before her and started hopping up and down while chanting its name. What is it? Are you trying to tell me something? Asked Delia curiously. Rat tatat rata Rattata. The Pokemon chanted urgently to even biting down on the hem of her dress and fueling it. Oh, could it be that you want me to follow you? Delia had a look of realization. Rattata, the rodent Pokemon nodded in affirmation before scampering off and making sure that she was following it, the duo made their way out of the town and towards the grassy plains where Delia noticed more Rattata and even Pidgey were standing around almost as if they were guarding something, the woman was just wondering what it is. Wah, asterisk, she suddenly stopped in surprise upon hearing the sound of crying, a baby's cry, and human one at that. She hastened her steps towards the source of the sound and saw more Pokemon gathered around but paid little attention to them until arriving at a small clearing and there in the middle was a baby wrapped on a bundle of cloth. Delia let out a gasp of shock and quickly went to carefully scoop it. Upon getting a closer look, she saw that it was a boy with blonde and strange whisker-like marks on his cheeks. The baby stopped crying and looked at her with sky-blue eyes which were full of curiosity. Oh my! You have the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen, said the woman, the baby giggled as if happy at such a compliment and reached out with his stubby little hands to touch her face, that alone stirred a foreign feeling within her heart, the desire to care for him as if he was her own child. But that feeling was quashed for the moment upon wondering where his parents are and how he got there in the first place, she then heard something hit the ground and looked to see that it was a scroll. As much as she wanted to open the scroll and see what's inside, there were more important matters to attend to I must get you home before you catch a cold under this weather, Delia turned to the Pokemon you can all be proud of yourselves, thank you for bringing me here, she received chirps and cries before bidding them farewell and making her way back into town. A few minutes later, Delia had arrived at her home and by then the baby was fast asleep while holding on tightly to her dress, causing her to smile warmly as she sat on the couch in the living room. She looked over at the scroll and picked it up to unravel only to be confused upon seeing a written language completely foreign, then the next she knew was that the letters began to shift and change right before her eyes into a much more familiar language and began to read. To whoever is reading this letter, my name is Minato Namikaze the former Hokage which is the leader of the Hidden Leaf Village but now I detest that title with the same going for my belated wife Kashina Uzumaki. Many years ago, there are nine powerful entities called tailed beasts and each village has one with mine possessing one called the Kayubi which was sealed into my wife when she was young. Both of us were married in secret due to my fame but we were happy and expecting the birth of our son. 
But the problem was that seal is very weak when the female container goes into labor and so I helped in keeping the seal secure while my wife gave birth safely. We were so overjoyed but it didn't last when a masked stranger attacked and held my son hostage, I was able to rescue him but the stranger captured Kashina and escaped only to unleash the Kayubi to attack the village. I took both of them to safety before setting out to battle the mysterious stranger who had the power to control the Kayubi. I was able to defeat him and disrupt his control on the beast, but it was still at large so I had no other choice but to seal it inside my son due to him being an Uzumaki which are the only kind to be able to serve as its container but the ritual would cost me my very soul. I was originally planning to entrust him to the village and have him seen as a hero, but a few months earlier I had discovered a horrible truth. My predecessor and the elders had been wanting to turn Kashina into an emotionless weapon when she was the container of the beast and I feared that they would attempt the same on him, and so my original plan was to transport my wife and son to another dimension so we can live happily until all this happened. So I wish to make this request shared between me and my wife, please take care of Naruto in our stead, give him the love we wouldn't be able to, raise him with the loving care of a parent, please. Signed, Minato Namikaze the yellow flash and a loving father. By the time she had finished reading, Delia was already crying, this world she just read about must be a cruel place for some people to do such times and yet this man was willing to do everything to protect his family after discovering the horrid truth to the point of sending his son far away from potential danger while containing a powerful beast within himself. She looked down at the baby to see him still asleep and held him close, and she felt her heart soar when he snuggled deeply in her arms. I'll honor you in your wife's request, I'll raise him with great love and care. I can even see it in his eyes, he might become one of the greatest Pokemon trainers in this world. Said Delia as she gazed lovingly at Naruto. The sun rises over Pallet Town as a majority of the residents woke up from their sleep to prepare for their daily activities with flocks of Pidgey flying in the skies overhead. We turn our attention to a house within the town where inside we can find Delia Ketchum at the kitchen wearing a light yellow t-shirt a pink apron, blue jeans and orange shoes as she's hard at work cooking up some breakfast, she turned away to look at the clock hanging on the wall and smiled softly. It's almost time for him to wake up soon, said Delia before returning her focus to the food being cooked on the stove. We now go up the stairs to the floor then through a door into a room. On the left side of the door is a wooden cabinet with the right wall side bearing a coat rack, Further inside on the left corner of the room between two windows is a slight shorter cabinet with a TV on top and a stereo next to it. On the right side of the room is a wooden loft bed which is just the top portion of a bunk bed and the bottom has a desk built into it whilst having small bookshelves and bearing a laptop which is currently turned off. On the bed we find someone who is covered up with a blanket and fast asleep, but not for long. Ring. An alarm clock in the shape of an open pokeball started ringing loudly causing the person to twitch and mumble drowsily as a hand reached out to press a button to stop it from ringing again. The blanket was pushed away to reveal a young boy with blonde spiky hair and blue eyes with the notable thing about him being the three whisker markings on his cheek. He was currently wearing green and yellow pajamas with pokeball designs on them. The boy rubbed his eyes to shake of the grogginess as he climbed down the ladder and made his way out of the room to bathroom and took a nice hot bath to become fully awake then returning to put on some clothes. He now wears a blue short-sleeved t-shirt with a sleeveless hoodie jacket over it, khaki shorts, blue wristbands, and blue and white sneakers. The boy ran down the stairs to the ground and into the kitchen where he saw Delia already sitting at the table laden with pancakes, toast, and orange juice among the other basics of breakfast. Good morning Naruto, I can see you're up now, said Delia with a warm smile. Good morning mom, Naruto responded with a foxy grin as he sat on the table. Ever since that night when Delia picked up Naruto from the bushes and learnt of his origins, she took him in and had adopted the baby with him taking on her name in addition to his. The time spent with him as he grew were more than precious to her. He's always excitable, curious, hyperactive and very friendly given how he easily got along with others in kindergarten but can be very protective when he sees his friends being bullied. One thing she noticed is that Naruto absolutely loves Pokemon and apparently they like him too, an example being the young Pokemon kept at the kindergarten perking up whenever he shows up to play with them and being sad whenever he leaves much to the surprise of the teaching staff. However not everyone is in good terms with Naruto and many would try to bully him and his friends 
that in turn awoken something within the boy which made them wish they never had, a prankster. The bullies would always find themselves on the receiving end of pranks and no one can prove that it was Naruto who had actually been getting help from the wild Pokemon in his pranks. So what will you be doing today honey? asked Delia. Naruto finished drinking a glass of orange juice before responding I'm going to Professor Oak's lab to have some fun with the Pokemon, he might also have some new cool stuff which has to do with Pokemon too. Okay then, I'll pack a small lunchbox for you, said Delia. Thanks mom. Naruto went back to eating his breakfast then carried the dirty dishes to the kitchen sink and he helped his mother with washing them. He went back up to his room to pack some items into a backpack before returning downstairs to find Delia waiting for him with a lunchbox in hand I'll be back later in the day. Be sure to send my regards to the professor for me, said Delia with a wave. I will. Naruto waved back before running down the path towards his destination, he ran through the town whilst saying hello to the neighbors and was soon crossing a wooden bridge over a stream then climbed up a flight of stairs towards a building at the top which has a wind turbine spinning slowly. Naruto opened the door and went inside to a hallway with several doors, he went to the end of the hallway and climbed up the stairs on the right to the first floor into a room full of technological devices like computers and so much than Naruto himself knows, there he found the person he was looking for. He is a middle-aged man with grey hair and wears a light maroon polo shirt underneath a white open lab coat, beige pants with a brown belt and brown loafers. Hiya Professor Oak, Naruto called out loudly. Said person turned around from his work and smiled upon seeing who it is on Naruto, good to see you my boy. How's your mother? She's doing great and wanted me to send her regards to you, Naruto replied while walking up to the professor so whatcha doing? I'm currently researching on the levels of loyalty of the Growlithe and Arcanine towards trainers and non-trainers, if there's a difference between two factors. I'm quite interested to find out, said Professor Oak thoughtfully. That sounds pretty interesting. Now you got me curious too, said Naruto. Enough about that for now, I don't need to guess why you're among the many times you've been coming, Professor Oak spoke with a knowing smile, Naruto rubbed the back of his head with a sheepish grin. Pretty much the same as usual, said Naruto. Oak has been familiar with Naruto since it was Delia who came to his lab and told him about everything which included his origin. Needless to say but the man was knocked for a loop as this was outside anything related to Pokemon but calmed down and decided to help as well as keep it a secret. Naruto quickly took to the professor and would always come to the lab to hang around or play with the Pokemon in the corral, it was quite surprising that Pokemon belonging to other Pokemon trainers were quite taken with him along with his own, making the young blonde an interesting research subject to check on from time to time. Well I shouldn't keep you waiting then, they're all out there waiting for you. Thanks professor, I'll see you later. Naruto ran out of the room and down the stairs, he went to the back door of the lab and emerged into the oak corral which is the place where the professor keeps all of the Pokemon belonging to trainers there. Naruto barely took three steps when something overshadowed him with flapping of wings being heard before landing on the ground behind him with a thump, then he felt a pair of arms wrap around him and was lifted into air. Instead of panicking, Naruto laughed a bit from being hugged I guessed you missed me huh, Dragonite. He grunted a bit from the hug tightening a bit before looking up at the draconic bipedal Pokemon with light orange skin. Dragu, Dragonite nodded with an eye smile before putting Naruto back on the ground, this happens to be one of Oak's Pokemon during his trainer day before retiring to become a Pokemon professor. Dragonite was present when Delia introduced Naruto as a baby and became rather caring more than normal when other children would come to visit the corral, there were times Dragonite would fly over to Delia's home to act as a self-appointed babysitter which Delia was willing to allow so it was no surprise that Naruto got attached to it. How about we go and see the others? asked Naruto, getting a nod from Dragonite and placing him on its back and flying deeper into the corral before landing atop a grassy hill. They didn't wait too long when pattering of feet could be heard and a variety of Pokemon appeared running towards them being Oddish, Rattata, Pidgey, Doduo etc. Hey guys, whoa, Naruto got tackled to the ground and ended up being dog piled on ok ok, I missed you all too. Please calm down. Dragu, Dragonite didn't like how they were being rough with Naruto and pulled him out of the heap with a small frown on its face, getting the Pokemon to look a bit ashamed. Don't be too hard on them, they're just happy to see me. Said Naruto in a placating manner, 
Dragonite wasn't entirely convinced but accepted nonetheless anyways. Let me tell you what's been going on since I last came to play you guys, he began telling them what he had been doing at school and at home along with the pranks he played on the school bullies and how nobody is still not able to prove that he was the one with the Pokemon laughing, then he played a few games with them before sharing his lunch if only a bit I almost forgot to tell you guys, I'll be going to a summer camp in a week's time where I'm going to learn a lot more about Pokemon. One of my many steps to becoming a Pokemon trainer. One of the Oddish poked his legs with one of its leaves to draw his attention Oddish odd odd. I don't know how long I'll be gone, but I'll be back before you know it, Naruto locked at the watch on his wrist to check the time and was rather surprised wow, look at the time. I gotta get home, now don't look so glum, I'll be coming back tomorrow okay. He cheered the Pokemon up when he noticed they're being sad. He was about to leave when Dragonite scooped him and placed him on its back you want to carry me home. Draw, Dragonite nodded in affirmation to his question. All right then, let's go. Naruto cheered happily as Dragonite began flapping its wings and took to the air with him holding on tightly then it flew in direction of Naruto's home and landed at the front door for Naruto to jump off thanks for the ride, be sure to tell the others all back tomorrow. He giggled when Dragonite nuzzled against his cheek before taking to the air again and returned to the oak corral. Naruto entered the house and called out loud Moom, I'm home. I'm in the living room, sweetie. Delia called out. Naruto headed to said place and found her watching a soap opera then she turned and greeted him with a smile welcome home, and how was your day at the professor's lab? It was a lot of fun, and the Pokemon really missed me especially Dragonite, Naruto plopped on the sofa next to her. Well it's to be expected since you always go there to play with them, keep it up and you might steal their attention away from their trainers, said Delia playfully. Oh come on mom, I wouldn't do that. Plus in the future I'll also be getting more friends when I become a Pokemon trainer. That's true, now go and wash up for dinner then we can talk afterwards about the summer camp next week, said Delia. Okay, Naruto jumped off the sofa and made his way to his home to change then take a bath. Afterwards he came back down to have dinner with Delia. The week had finally arrived and Naruto was currently standing in a group of children around his age as they waited for the bus hired to transport them to the campground. Naruto's ears picked up faint sounds of grumbling and glanced to the side and caught sight of some boys whom he recognized to be the class bullies are glaring at him. Feeling mischievous, Naruto turned towards them and silently mouthed the words, I will be pranking you which caused them to widen their eyes in fear before shuffling away much to his amusement. Hey Naruto, he turned towards the source of the voice to see a girl approaching him. She has brown hair which reaches up to the back of her neck, she wears a light green short-sleeved blouse, yellow skirt with large orange flowers reaching to her shin, and a pair of blue sandals I thought it was you. Hi you leaf, I was wondering where you are, said Naruto, happy to see his childhood friend. They spent a lot of time both in and out of school and Naruto would at times bring her along to the oak corral to play with the Pokemon too. My mom was making sure that I had everything I needed for the summer camp, I just placed my bags down and came looking for you, said Leaf with a smile but then it turned into a frown but he too was come along to the summer camp. Ugh, should have figured that he would be coming along too because of the professor, Naruto rolled his eyes at the thought of the subject of their conversation. Honk hoink. Everyone turned to see a yellow bus arrive into town and stop before the group, meaning that this was their transport to the Pokemon summer camp so the children including Naruto and Leaf began boarding the bus whilst the adults were packing the bags into the luggage before setting off their destination. It took some time on the road but the bus had finally arrived at its destination and everyone disembarked to view the area. It was a large camp site comprising of a large building and there were multiple wooden cabins in the distance, a playground amongst other things they've yet to see but the area is surrounded with a wooden fence. Naruto and Leaf took their bags from the bus and were led along with the group to the building where other children were already there. I can't wait to learn more about Pokemon, said Leaf excitedly. Me too, and I'll know how to make my future Pokemon the best the world has ever seen. Naruto pumped a fist with gusto. I told I saw a whiskered face around here, Naruto and Leaf growled at the sound of an annoyingly familiar voice as they turned round to a boy with auburn hair wearing a light blue t-shirt with red trims, brown shorts and red tennis shoes I figured that you would show up here. Hello Gary, said Naruto with a deadpan expression. 
He is the grandson of Professor Oak so of course they would have encountered each other long ago and needless to say they don't really get along that well. Gary's arrogance tends to rub Naruto the wrong way and he would use his knowledge to lord over him since everyone was aware that Naruto isn't exactly a scholastic type of guy but actually makes up for that with practicality, something Gary is jealous of with how the blonde so easily interacts with both tamed and wild Pokemon, almost as if he is a Pokemon magnet. Because of that Gary ended up calling him Poke Boy which really irritates Naruto and Leaf. What do you want? asked Leaf. I just came around to check out the competition, which aren't that much at all, said Gary nonchalantly. You just wait and see Gary, when we become Pokemon trainers, then we'll see who exactly is competition, said Naruto with a look of challenge. We'll just have to see, Poke Boy, said Gary smugly. Stop calling him that, said Leaf angrily, drawing the attention of some children. Gonna be a while till I get tired of the nickname. Era Era. Now what might be the cause of this state of unrest? A feminine voice called out softly to the group, they turned to see a pale-skinned girl with long black smooth hair reaching the upper part of her back. She wears a white kimono with large sleeves and a long hem with light blue snowflake designs on it, has a pale blue obi wrapped around her waist which is attached to a large bow on her back, and wears black get over white knee socks. Nothing to worry yourself over. Just telling these guys that I'm gonna be the best, said Gary. But I do wish that you be more polite to others, it won't speak well of you if that persona persists, said the girl. She's right you know, that kind of attitude will draw in enemies and push away comrades, another feminine voice spoke up, this time as a girl with darkened skin and short brown hair. She wears a black t-shirt with a yellow lightning bolt emblem and a yellow vest worn over it khaki-colored capri pants, and cream, black, yellow shoes with black laces. HMPH, doubt they could do anything to me by then. I'll smell you two later, Leaf and Poke Boy, Gary walked away with a flippant wave much to their annoyance. You shouldn't have bothered with that guy, he's always been that way as long as we've known him, said Leaf with a small frown. Even so, there's no harm in trying to convince him to change for the better. I had forgotten to introduce myself. My name is Aya Gozen and it is a pleasure to meet you all, said the kimono girl with a polite bow. And my name's Ginchio Tachibana, nice to meet you, said the dark-skinned girl. Well my name's Naruto Yu, N. Ketchum and this is my best friend Leaf Green, Naruto introduced himself with Leaf waving hello to the girls. So what is it that brought you here to summer camp? asked Leaf curiously. I wanted to catch a break from all the training my brother had been giving to me. Plus I wanted to meet up with Aya after all this time too, said Ginchio. Indeed, my mother also wanted me to come to camp to make acquaintances with others and I personally wanted to come and enjoy the scenery with the Pokemon, said Aya. We came because we want to learn more about Pokemon trainers and my dream is to become a Pokemon master, said Naruto pointing a thumb at himself. I haven't decided on what I want yet, but I plan to travel around the world to meet different people and learn about things I never knew. What about you girls? asked Leaf curiously. We're both heiresses from well-known families, Ginchio is from the Tachibana family which originate from the era of samurai in the Jodo region and I am from the Uesugi clan who are also from the same era in the Sinnoh region, said Aya. Then that makes you two nobles, you're kinda different from what I've heard and read about, said Naruto thoughtfully. Of course we aren't, we have pride but won't let it go to our heads. Too bad there are some like that, said Ginchio with a scoff. That's good to hear, you two are too nice to be stuck up, said Naruto with a foxy grin. Aya raised an arm sleeve to her mouth as she giggled era era, what a nice thing for a gentleman such as yourself to say. Ginchio slung an arm around Naruto's shoulder as she smirked I like you already, something tells me that we're going to get along just fine. Hey guys, the counselor is calling us over, Leaf spoke up for them to hear. Come on. Let's find out where we'll be sleeping then we can explore this place for a bit, said Naruto, picking up his bag. I'm with you on that one, said Ginchio. I would like to accompany as well, said Aya. All right, let's go, Naruto nodded in affirmation before the newly formed group approached the counselor to be assigned to the cabins for their stay in the camp. Time went by in the camp as Naruto, Leaf, Aya and Ginchio participated in many activities together and were having a lot. The group also got to learn more about each other as time went, 
Ginchio takes pride in her achievements and strongly believes in honor but would be utterly outraged at the sight of dishonorable acts and will not forgive so easily, she also has a love for electric type Pokemon. Aya is always calm and composed no matter what occurs and would never lose her cool, she likes taking things at a steady pace and not too fond of being rushed in the least, and she also likes ice Pokemon too. The two learned a lot of things about Naruto and Leaf especially the former. Aya is quite fond of Naruto's excitable nature and sunny disposition as it in a way harmonizes with hers and so would often invite him to strolls just to be within his presence. Ginchio came to discover that Naruto is curious about a lot of things and barely sits still, one time she showed him some basic katas taught to her with a stick and Naruto wanted to give it a try, the next thing she knew was that he emulated her katas perfectly which shocked her, she asked if he had done any combat training and was surprised when he said no and that this was his first time and wanted to know more. Ginchio was hesitant to teach as it goes against the rules of her clan and so just taught him the more common moves to at least bend the rules a bit although she didn't know exactly aside from the fact that Naruto treats her like an equal and not her position. Naruto once said that Ginchio and I are good friends and doesn't care if they're heiress to clans which surprised both of them and made them happy as well. Naruto himself was having a lot of fun with the girls, he often goes exploring in the woods with them and show them how to care for the Pokemon which were kept to teach the campers the practicality of caring for them. He and Ginchio would play competitive games to one up the other, Aya often invites him for strolls and casual conversations about things in the Sinnoh region much to his ever-growing curiosity. Leaf is often with him during those times though he tends to catch glimpses of them pouting at each other from time to time and would feel a bit confused at that. Soon a week was gone and they're drawing to the end of the time spent in the summer camp, so the counselors decided on one more activity. All right everyone, I'm sure you all know that there's three days left to the end of the Pokemon summer camp so we decided on one last activity and that is a Pokemon scavenger hunt. Said the counselor. Three days left huh? Naruto muttered quietly, to him it mean that he'll be saying goodbye to his new friends and it really bothered him. Now we'll be putting you all into teams of two in picture of the Pokemon which you two are to find and bring back the tags attached to them here. Whoever does so first are the winners. The counselor held out a box full of paper now step forward and pick out a paper which will align you with your partner then let the scavenger hunt begin. Naruto went to pick out a piece of paper and waited for his partner who soon showed up revealing to be a boy with black hair less spiky than his and wearing a black t-shirt with a red Pokemon logo on the front and camo cargo shorts with a pair of red and black sneakers, the boy approached with a smile on his face. Guess we're partners eh Naruto? Asked the boy. Pretty much so, Kuro. Let's go win this thing and show Gary what for. Said Naruto with a smirk. He met Kuro a few times and became friends as they had some things in common, they really love Pokemon and dislike snobby people like Gary. So the duo set off into the forest with a bag in hand to begin their quest. Elsewhere, a young girl with short brown hair wearing a pink dress with pink Mary Jane flat and a straw hat with a pink bow tied around it was walking through the forest looking very lost. The person she was partnered with suggested that they split up to search for the items and left before she could anything, leaving her alone to wander about aimlessly. Where is everybody? Is anyone there? Hello? The girl called with the growing feeling of unease. Suddenly the bushes in front of her started rustling which startled her. She turned to run but tripped herself, yelping when she fell to the ground, she looked back at the bush in fear as the rustling grew louder then a Pokemon jumped out and landed by to reveal it to be a polywag. It looked around for a bit and saw the girl who recoiled a bit before it hopped away deeper into the forest. I knew that I didn't want to come here at all, mommy. Tears gathered at her eyes as she laid there all alone. The bush started rustling again causing her to look back, wondering and hoping that something scary wouldn't appear again. The bush rustled louder and she looked away with her eyes closed and tears streaming down her cheeks. Hum, I know I saw it come this way, hello are you okay? A voice spoke up, getting the girl to open her eyes and look to see a boy with spiky blonde and blue eyes hi my name's Naruto Ketchum. What's the matter? I hurt my leg said the girl looking down at the bruise on her left knee. I see, then it's a good thing I brought this along, Naruto reached into his pocket and took out an orange handkerchief and wrapped it around the bruise then made sure that it was well tied there you go, it's my lucky handkerchief and it's sure to make your leg feel better. She tried to move but couldn't because of the pain it still hurts, I can't stand up. Come on now, 
never give up until the very end. It's best to keep trying with everything you've got than not at all. Naruto pointed a thumb at himself with a wink that's how I roll, so let's keep trying okay. This time I'll help, Naruto held a hand out to her. The girl stared at the gesture for a moment before gladly accepted it, but was surprised when she was suddenly pulled up to a standing position and stumbled into his arms in a hugging position of sorts, the girl stood back to look at the blonde who was grinning at her. See, you stood up with you second try, said Naruto happily. I did, thank you, said the girl with a shy smile. No problem. Let's get you back to the campground so we can have the counselors take a look at it. Naruto turned to guide her out of the forest when he heard her mumble something. Um, what's the matter? My name is Serena, said the girl with tinge of pink on her cheeks. It's nice to meet you Serena. Now let's get you out of here, said Naruto with a foxy grin. Oh okay. Serena nodded shyly he's so nice. Hey Naruto. A voice called out before emerging from the bushes to reveal Kuro there you are, where've you been? I thought you were going after Poliwag. I was but then I saw Serena hurt and I'm helping her back to the campgrounds for the counselors to check on her injury, Naruto explained. I see, then you go on ahead while I try to find that Poliwag, it's the last thing on the list anyway, said Kuro. Thanks Kuro, you're a real pal. Thank you very much, said Serena. No thanks necessary. Now get going, said Kuro with the duo walking past him in direction of the campgrounds, however none of them noticed that Kuro's eyes were glowing with some strange blue energy when he looked back at them so he really is the one that the world latched onto and brought here, his potential for bonds with Pokemon will be more than enough for me to pass on that. Sometime later, the scavenger hunt was finally over and surprisingly the winners were Leaf and Ginchio with Naruto and Kuro in second place and a sulking Gary and his partner in third. Naruto introduced Serena to the others and it took a while until they got her out of her shell and become comfortable with them. Serena got along well with Leaf and Aya as she's not too used to Ginchio's personality that much. But soon the three days were other and the time had come for them to go their separate ways, Naruto and the girls were currently standing at the parking area with the buses and heiresses limo waiting for them. I guess this is it huh, said Naruto silently. Yeah, said Leaf looking down on the ground. It saddens me that we must depart like this, said Aya. She's right, wish it would have lasted longer, said Ginchio. At first I didn't want to come to this summer camp, but now I don't want to leave, said Serena. It doesn't have to be that way, Naruto spoke up drawing their attention we can always keep in contact on the video phones. And when Leaf and I become Pokemon trainers, then I'll be sure to come to Johto, Sinnoh and Kalos to see you all again. Hearing this made everyone cheerful especially with his second sentence. You're right, you all better grow fast and visit soon, said Ginchio. Era era, that gives me plenty of time for your welcome, said Aya. I hope to see you all again, said Serena, smiling softly. We definitely will, right Naruto? Leaf to said blonde who gave them a foxy grin and a thumbs up. That's right, it's a promise of a lifetime. Naruto held out a pinky finger. The others linked theirs with his. Honk honk, it's time to go, the counselor called out, and everyone began entering the buses. Goodbye for now, said Aya. Goodbye, said Serena. Yeah, see you later, said Naruto. Everyone got into their assigned vehicles, and rode away to take different routes. Up on the hills was Kuro and he was wearing a black cloak, he gazed down at the bus transporting Naruto and Leaf before smiling as he put on the hood to shroud his face and walked away with his body getting taller by each step until reaching the height of a grown adult. Hope you train yourself well kiddo, I'm betting my cards on you, said Kuro in a much deeper voice before he was engulfed in a thick mist and disappeared. And Nidorino begins the battle with a horn attack, oh but Gengar bounces right back with a hypnosis attack. This could be the end of Nidorino, but wait. The trainer recalls Nidorino, which Pokemon will he use now? Announcer spoke with excitement as he along with the spectators were witnessing an intense battle between two trainers and their Pokemon within a stadium oh it's Onyx. Now giant Pokemon is on the attack but Gengar jumps aside. Gengar is moving beautifully today, its training is top notch no doubt about it. The camera zooms out to reveal the match being shown from a TV as a 12 year old soon to be 13 Naruto sitting on the bed watching it with excitement in his eyes oh man, seeing those guys duke it out on the field with their Pokemon makes me wish that tomorrow should just hurry up and come already. 
I've been waiting all this time and soon I'll be able to go on a Pokemon journey. Ever since the time he was at the summer camp, Naruto requested Professor Oak and his mother to teach anything and everything that could help him on his forthcoming journey. Delia took to teaching him about how to cook both normal food and Pokemon food, how to treat injuries amongst the many basics of survival. Professor Oak also taught him about what is needed to be known about Pokemon as well and was happy to do so as Gary outright refused his teachings and preferred to do things on his own much to his disappointment. Naruto himself took to training his body in preparation for the journey as he had seen many trainers who had passed through the though while covered in dirt and slightly worn clothes to show that they had gone through a lot of places which would be hard to reach by normal and it strengthened his desire to go to such places and find possibly rare Pokemon over there. Naruto had also been keeping in contact with Serena, Ginchio and Aya through the video phone, he often tends to blush whenever he looks at the girls as they had all grown to become beautiful and they're well aware of his poor attempts to hide his reactions and found it cute. I've trained and learned so many things for that day, soon I'll travel around the world to catch Pokemon and be their friend, then we'll go from league to league to show everyone that we're gonna be the very best that no one has ever been. The ultimate Pokemon master and the ultimate Pokemon said naruto with gusto suddenly the door was opened and delia came in with a small frown on her face naruto uzumaki namikaze ketchum do you have any idea what time it is asked delia sternly naruto turned towards the alarm clock on the table to see that it was 11 o'clock in the evening and chuckled sheepishly sorry mom i was just feeling excited about tomorrow that i couldn't sleep delia walked over to the table and picked up a black tv remote well if you can't sleep yet then at least watch this to get ready for tomorrow, she changed the channel to an educational program, showing Professor Oak giving a lecture about the Kanto starters which beginning trainers will be starting out with tomorrow be sure to go to bed when this is done. Okay mom, I will, said Naruto watching the program with rapt attention, with Delia closing the door. Greetings aspiring young Pokemon trainers. My name is Professor Oak and I will be teaching you about the basics of Pokemon and the Pokemon you will be starting out. Their names are Bulbasaur the Grass Poison type Pokemon, Charmander the Fire type Pokemon and Squirtle the Water type Pokemon. Said Professor Oak as he began the lecture. Naruto paid attention to the lecture until it ended then he turned off the TV, he changed into his pajamas and went to bed before letting sleep overwhelm him in anticipation for tomorrow. He dreamt that he was journeying along a road with his Pokemon when he heard rustling from a bush nearby and quietly approached it. Then he saw a pair of red eyes peering through the bushes and stared at him intently which made Naruto feel uncomfortable and slowly backed away but the eyes followed his every movement before suddenly disappearing. Ring. The blonde was suddenly roused from his sleep and looked out through the window to see that the sun had already risen and the Dodrio were calling out loud. Naruto got off the bed and quickly went to take a bath before changing into his new clothes. He wore a black long-sleeved t-shirt which he rolled the sleeves back to his elbows. Over it is an unzipped sleeveless orange jacket, a pair of trousers with pouches at the thighs, and a pair of black fingerless gloves and shoes with an orange strip in the middle refer to the cover image. Naruto quickly went downstairs and made his way out of the house but not before calling out to his mom. I'm heading to the lab, I'll be back soon, said Naruto. Okay honey, I'll have breakfast ready by then, Delia called back. Naruto ran along the path with great speed thanks to his daily training and was soon arriving close to the Pokemon lab and saw that a large crowd had gathered there, he noted a convertible with Gary along with a group of cheerleaders driving away with a cocky grin on his face. Seriously, how is one supposed to catch a Pokemon while driving a car? Naruto muttered to himself then he went through the crowd and up the stairs to enter the building to the research room to find Professor Oak waiting there next to the table where the starter Pokemon are stored Hi Professor Oak, I came here for my Pokemon to journey together with. Ah Naruto, it's good to see you. There might be a problem though, Gary along with Leaf and Red had arrived earlier than you and acquire the Kanto starters, said Professor Oak sheepishly. What, but I woke up early to come here, there really isn't any left for me asked naruto in shock he wasn't expecting this at all actually there's a pokemon in the reserves which i could give to you if you want i'll take it said naruto excitedly doesn't really matter to him if it isn't the starter as he'll befriend it regardless very well then just be careful as it can be quite feisty professor oak let out a warning then he pushed a button 
A panel opened up in the middle of the starter table for a Pokeball with a yellow lightning bolt to rise up. Naruto picked up the Pokeball for it to open up for a beam of white light to shot out and strike the table before materializing a Pokemon. It is a short chubby rodent Pokemon covered in yellow fur with two horizontal brown stripes on its back, it has long yellow ears that are tipped with black, on its cheeks are two circle-shaped red pouches, and its large tail is shaped like a lightning bolt with a path of brown fur at the base. Pikachu, the Pokemon squeaked out as it looked around before setting its eyes on Naruto. This is Pikachu, which is also known as the Electric Mouse. It's usually shy but sometimes can have an electrifying personality, said Professor Oak. I recall you teaching me about it. Naruto bent down to eye level with Pikachu and smiled fondly hello Pikachu, my name is Naruto and I'm glad to meet you. I hope we can be friends. Pika, Pikachu turned away with a huff, not wanting anything to do with the human. Although it couldn't help but take a glance at the markings on his cheeks which reminds it of those feline type Pokemon. I told you that this one's feisty, said Professor Oak. I know, everyone has their quirks. But I want to show Pikachu that I can be a good friend and partner on my Pokemon journey unlike some trainers who don't care about how their Pokemon feel. Said Naruto with a small frown, Pikachu's ears twitched upon hearing that and turned to stare into the blonde's eyes for any signs of deception and was surprised to see him stare back without blinking and showed no hesitation just give me one chance Pikachu to prove that I can be a good trainer, if not then I'll free you and quit being a Pokemon trainer. Pikachu looked at Naruto for a few more minutes before slowly nodding Pika. Naruto smiled brightly at that thanks Pikachu, you won't regret it. He turned towards the professor I'll go and say my goodbyes to mom before setting out. Alright then Naruto, take these along with you, Professor Oak held out the regional Kanto Pokedex, generation 3 version, and 6 Pokeballs which included Pikachus and I wish you good luck on your journey. Naruto took the items and put them in their assigned places thanks professor, now Pikachu ret, huh. He held out the Pokeball to return Pikachu when he saw it looked tense what is it. Then he noticed Pikachu glaring at the Pokeball could it be that you don't like going into the Pokeball. Pika, Pikachu nodded in affirmation, I see, then in that case I won't force you, said Naruto, Pikachu was beginning to see that this human is indeed different from the others it had seen and was liking it. The lightning mouse jumped up to Naruto's shoulder causing him to smile let's head over to my house first to get my gear then say goodbye to my mom. Pikachu. Naruto left the lab and was cheered on by the crowd and he politely waved at them before making his way back home and went inside for find his mom waiting for him patiently in the kitchen. Hello honey, welcome back, said Delia with a smile. Hi mom, this is my new friend and partner Pikachu, said Naruto. Pika. Pikachu waved a paw to say hello. Ah, isn't he cute? Delia petted Pikachu, making it let out a soft. Cha, in bliss well breakfast is on the table so let's eat before it gets cold. Okay mom, the group sat down at the table and helped themselves to the meal set before them. Pikachu came to discover that his trainer's mother is a great cook and wondered if he could cook just as good. Naruto himself was enjoying the breakfast and couldn't help that this would be last time he will be eating his mother's cooking in a long time till he returns all done, I'll be heading to my home to pack up my gear. Okay when you're done, I have something for you, said Delia. Naruto nodded in affirmation then he went upstairs to his room with Pikachu following him, then proceeded to pack items such as potions, ropes, rubber gloves, utensils etc into a black backpack with a yellow square label and slings with black adjusters on it. The backpack has two pockets and two open compartments on each side. The main bigger pocket is delimited by a black zip fastener, while the external pocket has an orange stripe on it. Now where did I put it? There it is, Naruto walked over to the dresser and took out a pair of goggles with orange tinted lens stylized to that of a headband which he tied to his forehead with the locks of his hair hanging over it. He heard a small rumble and turned only to smile upon seeing Pikachu come out from the dresser while wearing a hat which he had received from the Pokemon League in an expo after sending a postcard, it is a red and white hat with a green stylized, L, on the front I guess you like it huh Pikachu. Pika, Pikachu seemed to fancy the hat. Well you can have it, had gotten that one out of luck and didn't have much use for it, Naruto picked up the backpack let's go Pikachu, Pikachu hopped up to his shoulders and they went downstairs to see Delia waiting for them in the sitting room. There you are honey, this is for you, 
Delia held out what appears to be a large blue handheld device in the form of a flip top while possessing with dual screens with the bottom being a touchscreen this is the latest Pokager from the Johto region, I had it specially ordered for you. It acts as a phone, map, and a radio if you acquire the EXPN card from the radio tower in Lavender Town. You can use it call me at any time, which I hope you do often when out there. Naruto smiled warmly at her thoughtfulness and hidden worry for him. He took the Pokager before embracing Delia and felt her hugging him all definitely make you proud of me, Mama. Delia tightened her grip around him upon hearing that, it was the first words he had ever said to her and he calls her that whenever he is being very affectionate with her. I'm already proud of you, now get going, oh and don't forget to change your underwear. Said Delia. I know that already, I'm 13 years old. Naruto ran off with Pikachu laughing at his moment of embarrassment. Delia looked on with tears in her eyes but knows in her heart that he will return with a smile on his face. Naruto and Pikachu were currently walking along the dirt path away from Pallet Town with their next stop being Viridian City to acquire any new info just in case of anything, Naruto then spoke up for Pikachu to hear. Now that we are out here, let's see what info that the Pokedex has about you, said Naruto. Pikachu Pikachu hopped of Naruto's shoulder and stood the ground for him to take out the device then point it at him to scan then it spoke in a robotic voice. Pikachu, the mouse Pokemon. It occasionally uses an electric charge to recharge a fellow Pikachu that is in a weakened state. This Pikachu is male with the ability static. Moves. Tackle, quick attack, thundershock, agility. That's a pretty decent moveset for the meantime, I'll make plans for you to learn more moves but we'll focus more on body conditioning. Naruto took note of Pikachu looking confused at what he just said and so explained further what I mean is that we need to work on strengthening body so you have more stamina to last longer in battles, accuracy to hit your targets, speed to counter and defend. All these are what help bolster any moves taught or learnt, do you get it now? Pika Pikachu. Pikachu nodded in understanding, seeing the logic in what his trainer is talking about. Then their ears picked up the sound of wings flapping above them and looked to see what it is. It's a raptor-like avian Pokemon with brown feathers and a cream-colored face, underside and flight feathers. It has a crest of pinkish-red feathers on its head and black angular markings behind its eyes, the plumage of its tail has alternating red and yellow feathers with ragged tips with its beak and legs colored pink. It's a Pidgeotto. That's a rare sight around these parts, let's catch it Pikachu. Said Naruto excitedly. Pikachu. Pikachu took off his hat to give to Naruto before hopping off his shoulder and landed on all fours with his cheeks sparking with electricity. The avian noticed that it was being challenged and so swooped towards Pikachu at high speed with white energy trailing behind it. It's using quick attack, use agility to dodge and then use thundershock. Naruto called out, Pikachu moved like a blur to evade the attack then launched a blast of electricity which struck Pidgeotto for a super effective hit. Pidgeotto hung tough and started flapping its wings quickly to create a strong current of wind which sent Pikachu tumbling back but managed to recover stay strong buddy, now use quick attack while using that tree over there as a ramp. Pikachu took off at high speed with white energy trailing behind him as he ran up the tree then launched off the branch towards Pidgeotto and slamming into it but the bird Pokemon retaliated by smacking him away with a wing glowing with white energy, suddenly arcs of electricity coursed through its body which made it difficult for it to move. It's paralyzed, let's finish this by using Thundershock, said Naruto while taking off a Pokeball and pressing a button to make it larger. Pikachu, Pikachu gathered his energy and fired a blast of electricity to strike Pidgeotto, damaging it to the point that the bird Pokemon crashed to the ground and struggled to get back up. This is it, go Pokeball, Naruto threw the Pokeball to hit Pidgeotto as it opened up and sucked the Pokemon within it in the form of red energy before closing up and clattered to the floor. The trainer and Pokemon watched with bated breath as the ball rock once, twice, thrice then it let out a ding sound to signal. Naruto smiled widely and ran over to pick up the Pokeball before tossing it into the air and catching to hold before him all right, Pidgeotto has been captured. Hi Pikachu. Pikachu happily did a victory sign then took the hat back from Naruto to wear it, Naruto's Pokedex beeped before speaking. Pidgeotto the bird Pokemon and the evolved form of Pidgey. It renders its prey immobile using well-developed claws, then carries the prey more than 60 miles to its nest. This Pidgeotto is female with the ability keen eye. Moves. Tackle. Gust. Quick attack. Wing attack. 
This is great, we haven't gone that far and we already have a new friend with us, said Naruto happily. Pikachu cheerfully nodded in affirmation now let's get you two patched up with a potion here then we move on. He was about to reach for the potions in one of the side pockets when something swooped towards Pikachu whom he quickly scooped out of the way before the mouse got blindsided by whatever that blur was. They looked to see that it was a small avian Pokemon with rough brown plumage on its head and three brown feathers, it has narrow dark brown eyes with white pupils and a short hooked beak. The feathers covering its wings are pinkish red with lighter tips and it has a beige underside with two thin horizontal stripes, black feathers cover its back and has light pink feet. Spiro. The Pokemon screeched while glaring at them. That's a Spiro, but why is it attacking us? Asked Naruto confusedly. Wild Pokemon tend to be jealous of human-trained Pokemon, said the Pokedex. Oh come on, that's being unreasonable. The Spiro swooped towards Pikachu to attack them once more, but Pikachu wasn't pleased with what it's doing and so leapt off Naruto's arms and fired a powerful thundershock to send it plummeting to the grassy ground. Good job Pikachu. Now let's get out of here before it Naruto heard the wounded Spiro screech loudly then there were the sounds of many wing flapping and Naruto turned to see a flock of Spiro heading straight for them darn it, it's called for its flock. We gotta get away from here. Pikachu nodded in agreement before running alongside his trainer as they tried to get away from their feathered pursuers, Naruto would bat away any of the Spiro which would attempt to attack him or Pikachu but couldn't push away all of them and got pecked by their sharp beaks. Only of the Spiro managed to land a powerful tackle attack on Pikachu to send him tumbling to the ground. Oh no Pikachu, Naruto scooped his partner up in his arms and ran as fast as he could hang in their buddy. The duo ended up at the edge of a cliff with Naruto's mind racing on what to do next and came up with an insane conclusion I need you to hold on tight to me Pikachu, we're gonna try to lose these guys by jumping into the river below. Hi Ka, Pikachu responded weakly. Naruto took a few steps back then he dashed forward and leapt off the edge and splash into the river below feet first then proceeded to kick his legs rapidly to rise up to the surface, he finally broke through the surface and swam to the stony edge and coughed a few times we made it, sure hope that we lost those flock of Spiro, then he heard the all too familiar sound of wings flapping oh come on, can't they give up already. Naruto got up and took off running once more as the dark clouds gathered in the skies above with the sound of thunder and lightning flashing then it proceeded to rain all around. The blonde found it hard to see through the rain, mud made his balance unsteady, and his body screamed in pain from the strain of running and damage from the Spiro's attacks. His foot suddenly slipped and Naruto fell to the ground and Pikachu tumbled out of his hands. He struggled to his knees and saw Pikachu trying to crawl back to him while the flock flew about with the look of menace. Naruto couldn't believe that something like this is happening, being attacked because of some wild Pokemon's jealousy, it made him feel, very angry and the target of that anger are flying above. Naruto got to his feet with the front bangs of his hair hiding his eyes we were just minding our own business and made a new friend when one of you bird brains attacked us out of stupid jealousy which forced us to defend ourselves. Blue Aura began to radiate from his body which Pikachu seemed to have noticed and was surprised then you all joined up to chase and hurt us for that dumb sense of reasoning, that is really enraging me. Which is why I have every good reason to say this, Naruto raised his head to reveal his glowing blue eyes get out of my sight. As he roared out, the blue aura burst out from his body in the form of a massive explosion. The powerful aura slammed into the Spiro flock and sent them flying far away. The aura finally receded into Naruto's body which left him seriously fatigued as he collapsed to the ground and fell unconscious. Pika Pai. Pikachu crawled over to Naruto and pressed his head against his trainers to wake him up but to no avail although felt relieved to see that he was breathing and soon fell unconscious as well. Sometime later, there were the sound of footsteps and a black cloaked figure approached the duo then looked down at them as if contemplating of what to do next. Then it bent down and pressed a finger on the boy's forehead resulting in a bright flash of light. Naruto let out a small groan then opened his eyes to find himself floating in some sort of white space with no end in sight what's going on. Where the heck am I? Where's Pikachu? He looked around, growing more confused by the second then a voice speak up from behind him. You're currently inside your mind while your body is recovering from what you and your little buddy has gone through, Naruto turned round to see a cloaked figure floating before. W who are you? Asked Naruto. The figure pulled back on the hood to reveal a face which the blonde had the inkling that he has met the person from somewhere I'm a friend, 
though it's been a while since we last met. Suddenly it all clicked together for Naruto hang on, is that you Kuro? The Ravenette smirked in response in the mental flesh so to speak, been waiting for this moment when we would met again. What do you mean? asked Naruto confusedly. You may not have noticed but you used your aura for the first time to drive away the Spiro flock before blacking out which is really something as you have the largest amount I've ever seen anyone possess, said Kuro. Aura, isn't that the energy that Pokemon like Riolu and Lucario manipulate in and out of battles? Asked Naruto. Pretty much yes, though aura is a form of spiritual energy and is described as the essence of every living creature, including humans. There are also certain people capable of manipulating aura and they're called aura guardians. Aura guardians? Asked Naruto. Kuro nodded in affirmation aura guardians traveled around doing good deeds for both people and Pokemon, and passed on their skills to those who also possessed this innate ability. The aura guardians disappeared from history, for some undisclosed reason, a long time before the present era though there are still a few left scattered about in different parts of the Pokemon world. I'm the very last of a special group of aura guardians, Kuro looked to see that Naruto was paying rapt attention and so continued there are a different group of aura guardians that also travel around the world and perform good deeds for both humans and Pokemon, however they draw strength from the bonds between them and their Pokemon to be able to perform feats far beyond anyone's imagination whilst using the aura to augment their physical abilities. Each member of has a unique way of utilizing the power of bonds during their adventures which is sometimes shared between a certain few. So you're saying that I have the potential to become an aura guardian? But what about my dream of being a Pokemon trainer? Asked Naruto confusedly. It won't get in the way of that, but learning about our ways will definitely help you on your journey to protect yourself and those close to you. I've been watching you Naruto, you're a natural born protector and no doubt you will encounter enemies of both people and Pokemon throughout your journey which was part of the reason why you had been training yourself, said Kuro. Naruto had to admit that Kuro had a point there, he had learned of people like Pokemon poachers, hunters, thieves and many others from Professor Oak which he came to seriously dislike. If what Kuro says is true, then this training as an aura guardian could help him become strong enough to protect his Pokemon and friends. Alright Kuro, I'll take you up on your offer. Teach me to become an aura guardian, said Naruto determinedly. Kuro gave a smile of approval that's good to hear. I've left a tome as well as special gears in your backpack. They're already attuned to your unique aura and no one can take it from you plus they'll work well with the ability which you have awakened since it's closely similar to one of my ancestors Sukasa Kadoya. I have to get going and look for the aura guardians but we'll be sure to meet up later on. Thanks Kuro. By the way, I gave your Pikachu a little pick me up so he should be okay now. Naruto gave him a grateful nod then they faded away from the mindscape however neither of them stayed around long enough to hear a soft growl in the mindscape. Naruto opened his eyes and slowly rose to sit up from the ground, he looked to see that he was lying underneath a tree with his backpack propped up against it and Pikachu was sleeping next to him with no bruises on his body. Naruto gently prodded Pikachu awake for the mouse Pokemon to open his eyes and yawned loudly, he looked towards Naruto and jumped into his chest and held on tightly. Pika Pie Pikachu cried out in happiness to see that he was doing okay. I'm glad you're okay too Pikachu, really glad, Naruto smiled fondly, suddenly something appeared in a flash of light and they turned to see that it was some sort of card floating before them and it had the image of Pikachu on it. The card floated closer for Naruto to take it and examine closer I wonder what this is. Could it relate to what Kuro was talking about relating to an ancestor? Pi, Pikachu looked at his trainer confusedly. What was he talking about? Suddenly the duo heard a screech, and stepped away from the tree to see that the clouds had parted to allow rays of sunlight to shine through along with a beautiful rainbow, that was when they saw it, a majestic creature in the form of bird with a golden body and sparkles of light. Naruto and Pikachu watched in wonder as it flew over their heads and into the distance, then they noticed something sparkling in the air as it descended towards them. Naruto held out the other hand to catch what appears to be a feather with the colors of a rainbow. What kind of Pokemon was that just now? Asked Naruto in wonder. There is no data available. There are still some Pokemon are yet to be identified and researched, said the Pokedex. Amazing, think this will happen on the very first day of our journey. I can't wait to see what else awaits us in our future, said Naruto excitedly. Hi Pikachu. 
Pikachu smiled in agreement, he wouldn't have gotten to experience something like this as a wild Pokemon. Let's head over to Viridian City for some recuperation then we can come up with a plan on what to do next. Naruto pocketed the card and placed the rainbow-colored feather into his backpack at a place it won't get squashed before getting back on the road towards their next destination on a journey through the Pokemon world. Naruto and Pikachu were hastily walking along the pathway in direction of Viridian City with the sun already setting. It took some time until they could see their destination not much further away from where they were standing. We're almost there Pikachu, we'll get you and Pidgeotto all healed up at the Pokemon Center, said Naruto. Pikachu nodded in understanding Pika, the duo resumed their trek down the pathway and were soon inside the city. Naruto began looking around for a sign which could direct them to the Pokemon Center when he suddenly heard someone call out to him from behind. Hold it right there, he turned round to see a woman with light green hair and wearing the uniform of the police and recognized her to be one of the many officer Jennies, something that always confuses him to date. Uh, is there something wrong? asked Naruto confusedly. What do you think you're doing with that Pokemon? Officer Jenny asked while looking at Pikachu. I'm taking Pikachu to the Pokemon Center for healing, Naruto replied. Do you have any proof that the Pikachu belongs to you? Of course I do, Naruto reached into his jacket and brought out the Pokedex, here, then flipped it open to display his ID as a mechanical voice spoke up. My name is Dexter. I was given and registered to Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze Ketchum from Pallet Town by Professor Samuel Oak. I cannot be replaced when lost or destroyed. I guess you check out. I apologize for delaying you. Lately there have been suspected rumors of Pokemon thieves roving about, so I suggest you exercise caution, said Officer Jenny. It's okay and thanks for telling us about it, Naruto nodded in understanding. If you're looking for the Pokemon Center, then it's straight down that street over there. Thanks very much, Pikachu. Naruto bid the policewoman farewell and began following the direction to him. They soon arrived at a large building with a large P at the top. The duo went inside through the entrance and approached the front desk where a pink-haired nurse stood behind it, recognizing her to be Nurse Joy. Hello and welcome to the Pokemon Center, how may I help you? Said Nurse Joy in greeting. Good evening, I wish for my Pokemon to be healed, said Naruto. Then he took out a Pokemon while Pikachu hopped off his shoulder onto the desk after handing over the hat to him. Very well then, leave it to me, Nurse Joy took Pikachu and the Pokeball then went into another room. Sai might as well contact mom and the professor since I'm here now, Naruto approached one of the video phones and dialed in his mother's phone number while holding the receiver to his ear, he didn't wait too long as a familiar voice was heard. Hello this is Ketchum Residence, said Delia. Hey mom. It's me, Naruto chuckled when he heard her squeal then the video screen lit up to display her in her bathing robe which he figured that she just came out of the bathroom. Hi honey, I was wondering when you would call me. Where are you right now? Asked Delia happily. I'm calling from the Pokemon Center at Viridian City, said Naruto. That's amazing, I remember that it took about 5 days for a friend of mine to reach there. You sure are fast, so how was your first day as a trainer? It was a smooth start at first but things went a bit south when Pikachu and I got attacked by a flock of wild Spearow but things turned out okay, said Naruto, not wanting to go into too much detail concerning the power he has recently awakened. That must have been a terrible ordeal for the two of you, but I'm glad that everything is alright now. Me too, this is just your first day of being a Pokemon trainer, there's a lot more for you to learn but know that I will always believe in you. Naruto smiled warmly at that thanks mom, I won't let you down. Oh and don't forget to change your underwear too. Geez mom, I know that already. I'll call again when I arrive at the next city, said Naruto, saying his goodbyes before ending the call now to call the, he was called out from behind again. I was wondering when you would show up, a female voice spoke up, Naruto turned around to see a girl wearing a white hat with a pink Pokeball logo, a sleeveless teal shirt, a pair of black sweatbands on her hands. She also wears a pink skirt, long blue socks and athletic shoes with a pink stripe. Naruto blinked once before realizing who she is Leaf. Leaf smirked in response who else? I got here quite a while ago and thought to wait until you showed up. And what happened that you look roughed up like that? It's a long story, something I'll tell you after calling the professor and a good night's rest, said Naruto. 
Okay. I was thinking of calling him too. Naruto was about to dial the number when it began to ring much to his surprise but he decided to answer it nonetheless to find out who's calling at the moment, turns out it was someone whom he and Leaf are familiar with. Hey Naruto, it's me Professor Oak. Don't you recognize me? Asked said person. I do, which includes the back of your head that I'm looking at right now, said Naruto with a look of amusement while Leaf giggled. Professor Oak looked back to see that it was true and felt embarrassed oops, this often happens, he typed on his keyboard to switch the cameras to the right position I had just came off a call with your mother and she informed me of your arrival over at Viridian City, and I can see that Leaf is there with you. Hello Professor, said Leaf with a wave. Good to see you too Leaf, glad to see that you've all arrived there safely. By the way, are you and Pikachu getting along? Naruto smiled in response yes we are, only a matter of time before we become best of friends. Kinda obvious, given how Pokemon tend to get attached to you with just the first encounter, said Leaf having been witnessed that several times during their childhood. Oh, and there's something that I want to ask you too, said Professor. Oak. What is it? asked Naruto curiously. You see, Gary had made a bet with me that you two wouldn't be able to catch a Pokemon by the time you reach Viridian City with the winner getting a hundred Pokedollars from the loser each. Naruto and Leaf looked at each other and smirked with glee before turning to respond to the professor then consider yourself a rich guy as I caught a Pidgeotto and I'm sure Leaf also caught a Pokemon too. I did too, a cute Rattata, said Leaf happily. Professor, Oak smiled upon hearing that splendid. I'll be sure to send half of the money to your trainer accounts. By the way professor, Pikachu and I saw a Pokemon which my Pokedex couldn't identify, said Naruto recalling the memory of seeing the bird-like Pokemon. Really, a Pokemon which the Pokedex couldn't identify, I wonder what it is. Said Leaf. Perhaps it is a Pokemon which doesn't originate from the Kanto region, perhaps it was migrating, said Professor. Oak. I guess so, it looked so regal and majestic when I saw it, said Naruto, then he heard a chime I gotta go now, we can talk more later. Very well then, I wish you two all the best on your journey and hope to hear from you soon, said Professor. Oak fondly before ending the call. Naruto and Leaf made their way over to the main counter where Nurse Joy and Chansey, Pikachu happily hopped off to land on Naruto's shoulder and rubbed his cheeks against the blondes then putting on his hat and Nurse Joy held out the Pokeball to him. Your Pokemon are back to full health, said Nurse Joy politely. Naruto received the Pokeball with a smile thank you Nurse Joy. So I guess this little cutie is your starter, said Leaf while looking at Pikachu. Pika. Pikachu titled his head in curiosity. I would like for you to meet Leaf Green, she's a childhood friend of mine from Pallet Town, said Naruto, getting a nod of understanding from the electric type then he turned towards Leaf I'll be going to change and rest in my room, we'll meet up in the morning. Okay Naruto, see y'all later, said Leaf. Naruto nodded in affirmation before leaving the lobby as he went upstairs and into a room provided for him. He went to take a bath while Pikachu waited on the bed until he was done and came out while dressed in orange t-shirt and gray shorts. Naruto sat on the bed and thought back on what happened today when he suddenly recalled something. Oh right, Kuro said that he left something in my backpack. Naruto reached into the backpack to take out a brown journal along with a red bracelet, a card holster containing a couple of blank cards and a letter attached. He decided to read the letter first and so opened the envelope to do so. Yo Naruto, now that you're cooled down and all with your Pokemon, I'd like to give you the basics of what it means to be an Aura Guardian. First and foremost is that an Aura Guardian is meant to protect both humans and Pokemon whilst detaining oppressors, they also don't kill unless under extreme circumstances which I hope will never happen to you. Next is that being an Aura Guardian holds a lot of street cred as even wild Pokemon would be more cooperative. I'd like to talk more but the rest of the info is in the journal along with a training program. Another thing though, try to make sure that fewer people know of your aura powers so that your loved ones won't get caught in the crossfire like donning a disguise or something okay. The gears given to you are non-lethal but it doesn't mean that it won't hurt, gotta make the bad guys think twice plus enforce the no-killing rule so you won't have to worry when using them to their full power. We'll definitely be bumping into each other from time to time and we could spar to see how strong are you are. Your buddy, Kuro, P. S. You would get a little headache from the info dump I casted on the bracelet once you put it on and would never come off. A headache huh? 
Naruto looked at the bracelet with mild hesitance while Pikachu watched with concern. Pika -pi, asked Pikachu. Well, I would have to put it on eventually so I might as well get on with it. Naruto picked up the bracelet and slipped it through to his wrist. He was taken by surprise when it tightened itself and wouldn't come loose though it wasn't like he would attempt to remove it anyways. Next thing he knew was that his head began to ache a bit but it didn't last long until it faded away and information concerning the bracelet flowed into his mind whoa, that's pretty cool, can't wait to try it out. Pika -pi Pikachu, Pikachu asked to see if he was doing okay. I'm fine buddy, it wasn't as bad as we thought it would be. Now let's check out the journal before going to bed, he reached for the book but was then startled when an alarm blared and he heard Officer Jenny's voice through a loudspeaker in a frantic tone. Attention, we have signs of Pokemon Theives in the city. Please be on the lookout and be extremely cautious. Naruto shot up from his bed upon hearing that Pokemon thieves. That probably means that they're coming here. He went to put on some clothes then strapped the card holster and Pokeball belt on come on, Pikachu. Pika, Pikachu climbed onto Naruto's as he ran out of the room and down to the lobby where he saw Nurse Joy and Leaf already there. He was about to call out to them when something crashed through the glass ceiling and fell onto revealing two Pokeballs which opened up to reveal two Pokemon before them which Naruto swiftly identified them to be a coughing and an Ekans as the former unleashed a cloud of smoke. What going on? Asked Leaf in a mild panic. Prepare for trouble, a female voice spoke up. And make it double, then a male voice followed up. To protect the world from devastation. To unite all people from within our nation to denounce the evils of truth and love, to extend our reach to the stars above. Jesse, a woman with long red hair curled at the end wearing a short black shirt that exposes her midriff under a white high-collared sleeved shirt emblazoned with a large red R, a white mini skirt, black leg length boots, and long black arm sleeves appeared. James, a man with shoulder length periwinkle hair wearing a white long sleeved shirt with a large red R on it, Black short-sleeved undershirt with white pants with a purple belt on his waist and black boots and matching gloves stood next to the woman with a rose in hand. Team Rocket blast off to the speed of light. Surrender now or prepare to fight. Then a Pokemon identified as a Meowth landed before them and actually spoke Meowth, that's right. Team Rocket, aren't they the Pokemon thieves we've been hearing about on TV? Asked Leaf warily. Judging from the motto, that means that they are. Naruto glared at the trio along with Pikachu sparking electricity from his cheeks. Jesse smiled arrogantly good to know that we're well known around here, expect no less from Team Rocket. And now we'll be taking all of the Pokemon from here, said James. So start forking them over or there'll be problems, said Meowth, Naruto and the others were still finding it hard to believe that the cat Pokemon is talking. Well you're in the wrong place. This is a place for weak and sick Pokemon said Nurse Joy. Jesse scoffed in response maybe so, but there are bound to be some rare Pokemon for us to help ourselves to. Naruto took a step forward and you think that we would just let you by. Of course, we'll just crush you and be on our way, go Ekans. At her command, the snake Pokemon lunged at the target. Intercept with Thundershock, Pikachu. Naruto quickly called out, Pikachu leapt off his shoulder and launched a blast of electricity which shocked Ekans and sent it reeling back in pain. Quick, this way, Nurse Joy called out to Leaf and Naruto for them to follow which they did, Naruto saw that the rocket trio were about to follow them when he noticed a fire extinguisher hanging off the wall. He quickly picked it up and aimed the nozzle towards them before spraying them with foam before tossing it aside and going after the others into a room containing shelves of Pokeballs before locking the door when the lights suddenly went out. What just happened? asked Leaf. Nurse Joy replied Team Rocket Must has cut the power to the building, but luckily we have Pika Power. Pika Power? asked Naruto confusedly. Suddenly the power came back on then he looked to the side to see many Pikachu running along a large circular wheel while constantly discharging electricity to power up the Pokemon Center wow, that's, oddly convenient. Nurse Joy quickly made her way over to a computer and began typing rapidly on the keyboard we have to get the Pokeballs over to the Pokemon Center at Pewter City to protect them. A mechanical arm began picking the Pokeballs one by one and placing on the teleporter to be transported. That thing's too slow, Team Rocket will be here anytime soon. Said Naruto urgently, 
At that moment the door was broken down by coughing which also knocked the Pokeballs off the shelves as well and Team Rocket walked with smirks on their faces. Just give already, there's no way you can beat us, said Meowth. You should give up on me giving up. Let's go Pikachu, said Naruto determinedly. Pikachu stood before him ready for battle. Leaf stood next to him with a Pokeball in hand I'm helping too, help us out Bulbasaur. She threw the Pokeball for it to open up as her starter appeared next to Pikachu and was just as ready. Use wrap on that little rat, Ekans, said Jesse. Ekans quickly slithered towards Pikachu to execute the move. Dodge by using agility and then use quick attack, said Naruto. Ekans began wounding around Pikachu but he quickly evaded and then rammed strongly into the snake Pokemon's head before moving away. Coughing, use tackle on that Pikachu. James called out for his Pokemon to attack. We won't let you, Bulbasaur used tackle to stop coughing from attacking Pikachu. Said Leaf, Bulbasaur lunged forward and slammed into coughing and was able to knock it out of the way. Thanks Leaf, now use Thundershock on coughing, Pikachu. Said Naruto, Pikachu fired another blast to zap coughing. What are you doing Ekans? Get up and use Poison Sting. Said Jesse angrily. Ekans rose up and opened its mouth to launch a barrage of poisonous needles towards them. Use Razor Leaf to knock them out of the air, said Leaf. Bulbasaur began firing a barrage of her own to collide with the incoming projectiles hence cancelling each other out. Coughing, use Poison Gas, said James. Coughing opened his mouth to exhale cloud of purple smoke towards them. Quick Bulbasaur, use your vine whip to blow the gas away, said Leaf. Bulbasaur brought out her vines and swung it around rapidly in the manner of a fan and successfully blew it away before wrapping around coughing and slammed him hard to the ground. Pikachu used quick attack once more, said Naruto. Pikachu dashed forward with white light trailing behind him. Not so fast twerp, use rap Ekans, said Jesse. Ekans avoided the attack and wounded himself around Pikachu then proceeded to squeeze him tightly got your little rat now. I don't think so. Use Thundershock to break free. Pikachu managed to hear Naruto and unleashed electricity from his body, hence electrifying Ekans to the point of making him faint all right, way to go buddy. Pikachu. Pikachu nodded in satisfaction of defeating his opponent. Meowth stepped forward with a frown you're gonna pay for that, your cat food. He lunged at them with his claws bared but got blown back when Pikachu zapped him with another Thundershock but Naruto could see that he was already getting tired. There's gotta be a way to take them out, said Naruto then he noticed the bracelet beginning to glow before transforming in a high-tech gauntlet-like device, and referred to the gauntlet from Bakugan New Vistoya, which covered his entire forearm then a card shot out of the holster for him to catch and see that it was the Pikachu card. He looked confused at first before getting the idea of what he is to do okay then, time to finish this, Pikachu. Pika, said Pikachu, Naruto, what are you going to do? asked Leaf. I don't know but it's gonna be mind-blowing, the gauntlet opened up to reveal a slot which Naruto slid the card inside before closing then a voice spoke up. Attack mode. Thundershock. Naruto felt his body become enshrouded in electricity much to the shock on everyone around it's over, Thundershock. He thrust a hand forward to launch a blast of electricity. Pikachu. Pikachu quickly joined in with his own Thundershock. They constantly zapped Team Rocket to the extent that coughing expelled gas which was ignited by the electricity, triggering an explosion which destroyed much of the Pokemon Center and sent Team Rocket flying. Outside the building, Officer Jenny came skidding to a stop on her bike and looked up at the explosion in wonder I didn't know that there was going to be firework. Elsewhere, Team Rocket were hanging on to a rope attached to a hot air balloon designed in resemblance of a giant Meowth's head while covered in dirt and soot from having been shocked by Naruto and Pikachu. I can't believe those twerps beat us, said Jesse. That Pikachu was no joke and the boy's device actually made him use a Pokemon's attack too, Meowth pointed out to the others. Then we should steal them and hand over to the boss, said James gleefully. No sooner he said that did their balloon suddenly pop a hole which sent flying out of control into the night sky. Looks like Team Rocket is blasting off. The trio called out before disappearing into the distance in a twinkle of a star. The next morning, Nurse Joy was sitting before a computer with Officer Jenny sitting next to her within what's left of the Pokemon Center and was currently with her sister over at Pewter City. All of the Pokemon you have sent had been safely transported, said Nurse Joy's sister. 
That's a relief to hear. The kids that helped us are on their way there. Thanks very much sis. Then she hung up on the call I sure hope that they can make it safely through the Viridian Forest. No doubt they will. Those are different from the other trainers we have met so far, said Officer Jenny. In the Viridian Forest, Naruto, Pikachu and Leaf were walking along the dirt path while having a conversation about everything that had occurred yesterday which also included his meeting with Kuro as well. So that's what happened, though I never expected you to become an Aura Guardian, said Leaf after listening to what Naruto told her but isn't it supposed to be a partial secret like you said. True but I know I can trust you, we've never told anyone each other's secrets and you're my childhood friend after all, said Naruto with a foxy grin. Oh oh right. Thank you for trusting me Naruto, Leaf looked away with a blush on her cheeks, touched at how much faith he has in her but what about your mom and the professor, aren't you going to tell them? I will but I need to come into grasps with my role as an aura guardian before eventually telling them, said Naruto thoughtfully. Okay then, so what's your current plan in the meantime? I'll be doing some training with Pikachu and Pidgeotto while I do some training of my own then resting a bit before going out to search for some Pokemon to catch said Naruto what about you? Leaf reached into her bag and took out a digital camera with a smile I'll be taking some pictures of the scenery with some training here and there before meeting up with you. Okay Leaf, but be careful around here. I heard there are swarms of Beedrill here. I will. Leaf then walked away. Now then, let's find ourselves a small clearing then we can begin with training. Pikachu. Pikachu looked ready to get a lot stronger. The duo walked further into the whilst making sure to avoid any Beedrill territories till they found a small clearing which was good enough for their needs, Naruto then brought out Pidgeotto and introduced himself and Pikachu with the bird Pokemon being quite friendly to them. Naruto took to running laps around the clearing with the Pokemon with Pidgeotto running on her legs after he pointed out that there would be situations where she wouldn't be able to use them while also to build up their stamina as well to last longer and their base speed in inclusion. Next Naruto set up targets using wooden logs and stones for them to use their moves on them, saying that they need to completely master their moves before moving on to learning new techniques, he himself wasn't being idle either as he took to doing push-ups between two-handed and one-handed then sit-ups amongst others till he decided to rest a bit. Oh yeah, I still haven't read the journal yet, Naruto took the book out of the bag and began to read. According to the journal, there was a special clan of Aura Guardians known as the Kazuna clan which means bonds. They were a different group of Aura Guardians that also travel around the world and perform good deeds for both humans and Pokemon, however they draw strength from the bonds between them and their Pokemon to be able to perform feats far beyond anyone's imagination whilst using the aura to augment their physical abilities. Each member of the Kazuna have a unique way of utilizing the power of bonds during their adventures. Some of the clan members utilized the power of such bonds in the form of cards and there were three known to be absolute masters. First is Shinji Kido who detests wars and saddens at the loss of life, his cards were based on the powers and abilities of dragon types. Second is Kazuma Kenzuki, an aura guardian who vowed to never let an innocent human or Pokemon feel pain if he could help it which was what motivated him to fight against all odds, his cards are based on the basic abilities of various Pokemon which he emulates to enhance his own. The third and final would be Tsukasa Kadoya, a seemingly arrogant man who always claims to be passing through whenever he was being asked due to never staying in one place for too long but he truly cares for the harmony between human and Pokemon, thus would fight fiercely to protect and maintain it, his cards emulate the attacks of Pokemon and capable of working in collaboration with them. These three were the strongest of the Kazuna clan during their time till they retired. Man, I got a lot to do to earn a place amongst the big greats. But it's going to be a long but fun road for me and the Pokemon before we get there. First things first I need to gain proper access to my aura. Naruto flipped through the pages and saw the instructions then he placed the journal aside and sat cross-legged on the ground with his eyes closed as he proceeded to meditate. As he searched within himself, he began feel a sensation and searched calmly with it getting stronger till he finally grasped and let it flow through him. When he opened his eyes, Naruto saw that his body is covered with a blue cloak of aura and it made him feel stronger and enhanced his senses. Wow, so this is my aura. I feel so much stronger and not even tired. He then noticed Pikachu curled up on his lap with a blissful look on his face and Pidgeotto was nestled next to him and they weren't the only ones as he saw a Pokemon sitting on his shoulder which he identified to be a Caterpie, 
he recalled from the journal that aura tend to have a positive or negative effect on human and Pokemon and guessed that was the reason why they were all so relaxed around him. Naruto reached over to pick the bug Pokemon from his shoulder and held it before him. The movement seemed to have roused Caterpie from its sleep as it looked up to him and tilted its head in curiosity. Looks like you found a good place to take a nap, eh? Asked Naruto, chuckling when he saw Caterpie wiggle around a bit in embarrassment. It's all right, I don't really mind. I guess my aura had attracted you here. Caterpie nodded. It was crawling through the trees when it felt a nice and warm sensation then followed it to him. It also saw Pikachu and Pidgeotto there too but the feeling was so nice that it couldn't help but crawl over and fell asleep on his shoulder. Talking to him now assured it now that he is a very nice trainer, maybe he could help it achieve its lifelong dream. Say Caterpie, I was wondering if you would like to be my Pokemon and come along. My dream is to be a Pokemon master and I can help you to be the strongest as you can be while treating you with the utmost respect. What do you say? Asked Naruto. He needn't wait long as Caterpie was nodding its head eagerly great. Just give me a minute. Naruto took a Pokeball from his belt and activated it before tapping on Caterpie's head, sucking it inside and ding to confirm capture all right, Caterpie has been captured. Naruto's cheer roused Pikachu and Pidgeotto from their aura-induced sleep as they looked at Naruto in confusion as the former called out to him Pikapi, Pikachu. I just caught a Pokemon which is a Caterpie while you two were asleep. Naruto snickered when they looked at him wide-eyed can't blame you, my aura was that relaxing huh? Pika, Pikachu and Pidgeotto nodded in affirmation, when he began radiating his aura, they felt all of their aches from training fade away when they stayed close to him and are now feeling refreshed now they're awake. They were about to say more when their eyes suddenly narrowed and glanced to the side, Naruto would have said something as well but he too sensed what they detected due to his newly awakened aura. Something emerged from a clump of bushes to their left and it wasn't leaf, Naruto's eyes widened upon what he was seeing before him. It is a green bipedal insectoid with cream accents between its three body segments, on the back on the back of its somewhat reptilian head are three points and has narrow eyes. Its forearms consists of large white scythes, on its thighs are spikes of fur, and it has three clawed toes on its large feet, it also has two pairs of cream colored wings extending from its back. Naruto took out his Pokedex to scan the Pokemon. Scyther, the Mantis Pokemon. Its claws are sharp as swords, and it is a powerful flyer. This Pokemon is rarely seen by humans and almost never captured. A Scyther here in the Viridian Forest, that's pretty unusual despite this place being home to many bug-type Pokemon, said Naruto. He noticed the Scyther looking at him intently and took a step forward making Pikachu and Pidgeotto step before their trainer to protect him. Scyther ignored the two and continued to stare at Naruto. Suddenly the bracelet transformed into its gauntlet form and a card shot out of the holster like before for Naruto to catch and look to see that it is a blank card which then changed to illustrate the symbol of a sword. Not knowing what else to do at the moment, Naruto inserted the card into the gauntlet. Gear up! Or a blader! Something then appeared in a flash of light which then faded to reveal a high-tech saber, and refer to Blay Rouser from Common Rider Blade, in Naruto's hand much to his surprise. He saw the scyther stop and looked at Naruto and the blade before taking up a stance with its scythes raised before, it was then Naruto understood its intentions. I get it now, you want to fight me instead, said Naruto, scyther nodded in affirmation to his statement then in that case, I'll take up your challenge. Pika Hi Pika Pikachu, Pikachu was in clear disagreement with Naruto and wanted to be the one to battle Scyther, Pidgeotto was chirping in agreement with the electric mouse. I understand your reasoning, but don't worry cause I'm sure I can handle it, the Pokemon still weren't and hesitantly stood back but ready to intervene when necessary. Naruto stepped forward and took a stance with the aura blader before him as he saw Scyther still keeping him within its sights ready. At his words, they dashed at each other and clashed in the middle. Both sides constantly clashed blades in attempts to gain dominance over the other, Naruto was able to keep up with Scyther thanks to channeling the aura throughout his body to enhance its base capabilities. He blocked one of the scythes then quickly rolled away from a follow-up of the second scythe and tried to retaliate with a lunging stab but Scyther dashed backwards to evade then it suddenly began creating duplicates which then surrounded him before attacking from random directions, putting the blonde trainer into a defensive role. Naruto thought fast and quickly took out a Pidgeotto card and inserted it into the gauntlet. Attack mode. Quick attack. 
Naruto crouched slightly then dashed forward while leaving behind a trail of white light as he began slashing through each of the duplicates and forcefully dispelling them till he located the real one and struck out with a slash. Scyther quickly evaded with a quick attack but Naruto maintained pursuit as they rapidly clashed with each other with great speed before being sent skidding away for a momentary rest and the card was ejected from the gauntlet and he placed it back into the holster. Scyther, Scyther crossed its arms and spun around quickly causing a light blue wind to swirl around it as the bug Pokemon opened its arms to launch a crescent-shaped shockwave towards Naruto who quickly took out the Pikachu card and slotted it into the gauntlet. Support Mode Agility Naruto promptly disappeared from view in a blur as the shockwave went on to cut deeply into a tree, Scyther looked around for its opponent when it suddenly felt something poke its back and looked back to see Naruto standing behind him with the tip of the aura blader poking its back with a smile on his face. Despite wanting to continue, Scyther decided that the fight has gone on long enough and so placed its scythes down to signal its end. Naruto stepped away and walked back to Pikachu and Pidgeotto who were relieved to see that he was okay and the aura blader turned back into a card for him to place along with the Pikachu card back into the holster and the gauntlet reverted to its bracelet form. Are you satisfied? asked Naruto. Scyther nodded much to the confusion of the Pokemon Scyther was testing me to see if I had what it takes to be its trainer after sensing my aura before, I realized it when I was clashing blades with it, he then approached Scyther with an activated Pokeball before him so do you wish to come with us? Scyther smiled and nodded, this human is certain to take part in many battles where it would face strong opponents to test its strength against all the while getting stronger with training Scyther. It tapped its head on the Pokeball and was sucked inside as it rocked around for a bit before letting out a ding to signal its capture. All right, Scyther has been captured, said Naruto cheerfully. Hi Pikachu. Pikachu cheered as well before climbing onto the blonde's shoulder, happy for getting a new friend despite everything. Naruto took out the Pokedex to scan for more details. This Scyther is a male with the ability technician. Moves. Vacuum wave. Quick attack. Leer focus energy, pursuit. Then Naruto scanned Caterpie next. Caterpie, the worm Pokemon. For protection, it releases a horrible stench from the antennae on its head to drive away enemies. This Caterpie is male with the ability shield dust. Moves. Tackle, string shot, bug bite. Wow, both of them have a decent moveset. I'll plan a training regime for them later while we progress through the forest, said Naruto. He heard a rustle and turned to see Leaf walk into the clearing. Hey Leaf, I see you're back. Yeah, I got some pretty good picks and trained with Bulbasaur and Rattata for a bit. I also caught a Weedle along the way too, Leaf replied how did your training go? It went well plus I caught two more Pokemon while I was at it. Naruto looked up to the sky to see that the sun was already setting it's getting pretty late, what say we set up camp right here for the night? Good idea. Plus I'm feeling a bit hungry and so are the Pokemon, said Leaf. Alright then, let's get to it. Naruto went over to the bag and began taking out the camping set and told Pikachu and Pidgeotto to pick up some dried up sticks to use for the campfire. Leaf soon joined in to help. 96, 97, 98, 99, and 100. Said Naruto as he finally stopping swinging the aura blade held in his hands and reverted it to its card form. He heard the fluttering of wings above him before something dropped on his head, revealing to be a towel which he used to wipe the sweat off him. He looked up to smile fondly at the Pokemon flying above him thanks for the towel, Butterfree. Free free. The bug, flying Pokemon chirped happily as he flew around Naruto who suddenly felt a slight prick to the side and turned to smile sheepishly at the cause. And good work to you too Scyther, don't think I had forgotten about you either, said Pokemon scoffed in response. Apparently he too had been practicing alongside the blonde trainer who had noticed that the second bug Pokemon has an interest in swordplay as he's always around whenever Naruto brings out the aura blade to engage him in a spar let's head back into camp to meet up with Leaf and the others. Receiving nods of affirmation from the two bug Pokemon, Naruto finished drying up before taking his jacket which he had hung from a low tree branch to put it on before they began making their way back to the campsite. There he saw Leaf sitting on a tree log with a laptop on her lap and typing away with Pikachu and Bulbasaur watching with curiosity. They heard footsteps and looked up to see who it is and perked up. Pikapi. Pikachu happily scampered over to plop himself on Naruto's shoulder with the blonde fondly smiling at the lightning mouse. Hey there, Pikachu. Naruto playfully flicked the brim of the mouse's hat. 
Looks like you're done with your training, said Leaf. Yeah, was doing some calisthenics with Scyther to stay in shape especially we already had training on moves proficiency yesterday. Yeah, I could see the results of the training whenever you battled those bug trainers here in the Viridian Forest, said Leaf as she recalled the looks of disbelief on the trainers, given that Naruto was a two-week-old Pokemon trainer. Thanks to the training, Naruto's Caterpie evolved into Metapod then to a Butterfree which is currently sitting Naruto's head. The blonde went on to train the other Pokemon to learn new moves after having helped them master the ones they already know. How's your blog coming along? Asked Naruto, taking note of the laptop. I'm almost done setting up the site, thanks to your Pikachu helping recharge the battery. Though I think we should get a move on though, I'm sure we'll be able to arrive at Pewter City by noon, said Leaf after looking at the time on her Pokager. Point taken. Almost forgot that we're out of food since we've been in this forest for a while, Naruto returned the Pokemon excluding Pikachu into their Pokeballs before packing up and starting their trek through the Viridian Forest. Eventually, they exited from the forest onto the open road and later caught sight of a city in the distance with the Pokager identifying the place to be Pewter City looks like we made it to Pewter City. Pikachu, Pikachu nodded in agreement. Let's head over to the Pokemon Center to take care of our Pokemon and then figure what to do from there, said Leaf. With that said, they entered the city and followed the directions to the Pokemon Center which apparently a tall tower then went inside to see many trainers and medical staffs moving about and taking part in various activities. Naruto and Leaf went over to the reception desk where they saw Nurse Joy standing behind it and approached her. Hello Nurse Joy, could you please help revitalize my Pokemon? Asked Naruto, having placed his Pokeballs in a tray with Pikachu hopping onto the table after giving his hat to his trainer, not wanting to lose it. Mine too please, Leaf presented her tray as well. I'll be pleased to do just that, Naruto and Leaf, said Nurse Joy with a smile. Leaf blinked in confusion you know of us. Of course, the Joy of Viridian City who is my little sister told me about how the two of you helped protect the sick Pokemon from Team Rocket, Nurse Joy explained. We were just doing what was right, Naruto rubbed the back of his head sheepishly. Which was very nice of you, by the way have you checked the poster behind you yet? Asked Joy before walking away to heal the Pokemon. Poster. Naruto turned around and saw said poster on the wall then proceeded to read at the Pokemon League Regional Championship, one must attain a badge from a gym leader of a town or city through a Pokemon battle. In order to participate in the Championship League, one must have accumulated eight official gym badges. Looks like the rules haven't changed that much besides the increment of the age requirement to become a Pokemon trainer, said Leaf. I'll wait until Pikachu and the others are healed up then I'll head for the gym here, said Naruto. In that case, we could use this chance to stock up on supplies as well as call our moms too, Leaf suggested. Good idea, apparently the Pokemon Center also has a store in built. After a phone call with their mothers, the duo went to the shop and restocked on potions, antidote, paralyze heal, and awakening besides food for the journey thanks to the money earned from winning the Pokemon battles against the trainers back in the Viridian Forest. They went to pick up their Pokemon afterwards, they were walking along the street when a passerby handing out brochures gave one to them before continuing on his way. They read off the brochure to learn that the Pewter Museum of Science has reopened after its renovations. A museum huh, let's go check it out, this could help with my blog and we could learn a couple of things along the way, said Leaf thoughtfully. You're on to something there Leaf Chan, what do you think Pikachu? Asked Naruto. Pikachu thought about it for a moment before nodding in agreement Pika Pikachu. In that case, let's go. The group followed the map printed on the brochure and soon arrived at their destination, paying an entry fee of 50 poke dollars each sans Pikachu to enter. They marveled at the exhibits which dated back to ancient times with the skeletal models of Pokemon like Aerodactyly and Kabutops in display, Leaf was taking pictures and notes as they toured the place when they overheard two girls pass while gossiping about something. Did you hear, about Brock the gym leader? He's an amazing trainer who overwhelms anyone that tries to challenge him, said the girl. Amazing, everyday trainers come to the Pewter City gym to challenge him, said the girl's friend in admiration. The gym leader sounds strong, are you up for it Naruto? Asked Leaf with mild concern. My Pokemon and I have trained hard, battling Brock will tell us how far we're come and how long we have to go. 
I have confidence that we'll push through, said Naruto with determination, Pikachu felt the same way. Then I'll be rooting for you all the way, said Leaf, getting the blonde to smile at her. They left the museum and followed the directions given to them till they arrived at the gym which seemed to be rock-themed before making their way inside through the large double doors. The interior was quite dark which it hard for them to see, they hardly took more than four steps when a spotlight turned on at the far end of the room and shone down on someone. He is a young tan boy who's probably about three years older than Naruto with spiky black and distinguishable squinty eyes. He wears a green vest which has four large pockets on the front over an orange short-sleeved t-shirt, along with brown pants held up by a black belt with a gold rectangular buckle, had attached brown belt pockets on either side, and a pair of blue and white sneakers. Who are you and what are you doing here? Asked the boy. My name is Naruto Yu. N. Ketchum from Pallet Town and I came here to challenge the gym leader to a battle to earn a badge. I take it that you're Brock then. Naruto introduced himself. Is this your first match? For if it is, then it's far different from a regular Pokemon battle as there are special rules. Such an example being that we will use two Pokemon each, understood. Brock explained. Naruto nodded in affirmation I understand well enough. How long have you been on your journey? About two weeks tops. Your Pikachu is still at its cutest stage, Pikachu blushed a bit at the gym leader's words, it can't win, okay now that soured his mood. I suggest you don't go assuming that you know me, I came into this gym while fully aware of what it means to challenge a gym leader, said Naruto with a frown. Very well then, I have to answer to every challenge as a gym leader, Brock snapped his fingers as the walls opened up and two halves of a rock-themed arena slid into place in between Naruto and Brock while Leaf climbed up to the stands to watch the forthcoming battle. Both took their places and brought their Pokeballs for battle. Music start. Pokemon Black 2 White 2 Super Music Complete Ost, Battle. Gym Leader Kanto. Let the match begin, go Geodude. Brock declared before throwing the Pokeball out into the field for it to open up in a bright flash of light and reveal a grey boulder-like Pokemon with bulging rocky eyebrows, trapezoidal brown eyes, a wide mouth, and a pair of muscular arms with five fingers. Naruto threw his Pokeball into the field as well to reveal his Pokemon being Butterfree. Then he tightened his goggles with determination all right Butterfree, let's show them what we've got. Free. Butterfree looked ever ready for battle. Brock quirked an eyebrow at this using a bug, flying type against a rock, ground type is a rookie mistake. Go Geodude, use tackle attack. Geodude used its arms to launch itself towards Butterfree with great speed. Butterfree, fly straight up to dodge and then use string shot. Naruto quickly called out. Butterfree flapped his wings to quickly ascend to evade the incoming attack then spewed out sticky silk to wrap around his target to restrain it. That will not hold Geodude for long, said Brock as Geodude was already in the process of tearing the bindings free. I know, but long enough to do this, use Stun Spore Butterfree. Said Naruto, surprising Brock with the bug Pokemon dispersing orange spores from his body onto Geodude who began to spasm a bit afterwards now use Tackle. Butterfree now took to ramming into Geodude repetitively with the rock Pokemon grunting at each impact. What's going on? Tackle shouldn't be affecting Geodude this much as a normal type move, said Brock in confusion. That would be because of my Butterfree's tinted lens ability which enables him to use, not very effective, moves to deal regular damage. Part of the reason why I choose Butterfree for battle, Naruto explained. So that's why, but I'm not done just yet. Geodude, use rock throw brock commanded geodude scooped up nearby rocks and flung them towards butterfree use confusion to catch those rocks and send them right back butterfree naruto quickly reacted butterfree's eyes glowed with purple psychic energy then thrown rocks stopped in midair for a moment before flying straight back and pelting geodude it's over with this use gust Butterfree flapped his wings strongly to launch a powerful blast of air to send Geodude flying and slammed into a boulder where it collapsed to the ground unconscious. All right, way to go Naruto. Leaf cheered happily at the blonde's victory when she heard a whine and looked to the side to see ten young children and noticed that they all bore a strong resemblance to Brock could they be related to Brock. Return Geodude, Brock recalled the defeated Pokemon back into its Pokeball you certainly trained your Pokemon well but let's see you can take on my last Pokemon. Go Onyx. 
He threw his second and last Pokeball out into the field to open and reveal what appears to be a Pokemon composed of a giant chain of gray boulders that becomes much smaller towards the tail and on the top of its head is a rocky spine, making it akin to a snake made of stones. Okay then, return Butterfree and good job. Naruto recalled the bug Pokemon back into the Pokeball before glancing at Pikachu it's your time to shine Pikachu, because I choose you. Pika, Pikachu handed his hat over to Naruto before leaping off his shoulder and running into the battlefield in anticipation. Brock would have critiqued Naruto for his choice of Pokemon but the previous round already pointed out how unusual the blonde trainer is Onyx, use tackle. Onyx lunged at Pikachu headfirst for a collision. Use agility to keep away from Onyx, Pikachu. Naruto called out in alert. Pikachu took off with increasing speed as he evaded repeated tackle attacks from Onyx now use Electro Ball. Pikachu launched off a boulder and formed a sphere of yellow electricity at the tip of his tail before firing it at Onyx to inflict damage. Onyx, use Rock Throw, said Brock with the rock-type Pokemon slamming its tail into the ground and rocks flew out at Pikachu. Naruto's mind raced for a solution use agility once more then use quick attack on Onyx. Pikachu rushed forward, rapidly darting from left to right to evade the rock projectiles. Onyx use slam when Pikachu gets close enough. Brock commanded, Onyx nodded in affirmation and readied its tail for the attack. Dodge at the last minute and run up Onyx's body and then use iron tail. Pikachu timed his moment carefully then evaded the stone tail with a sidestep then ran up with his tail turning metallic before lashing out with a swipe to land a super effective hit, the momentum and move typing proved to be too much for Onyx to bear as it collapsed to the ground with swirls in its eyes. Alright, we won, Naruto cheered with a fist pump and Pikachu jumped up and down happily before running back to Naruto and receiving his hat. Music end. Brock gaped in shock at the outcome before letting out a sigh of resignation and brought out his Pokeball to recall Onyx Onyx, you did your best so return for a good rest, then he approached Naruto with Leaf walking up to him and the children following after her you trained your Pokemon well and came up with ways to earn victory which I've hardly seen with other trainers since they would challenge me with Pokemon of type advantages. I just try help my Pokemon to be the best I believe they can be, and I should also prove myself worthy of being their trainer, said Naruto. Pikachu. Pikachu was in full agreement. The training was hard but results were worth the effort. Hearing that makes me glad to award you with the boulder badge, Brock reached into one of the brown belt pockets and held out a token which is a simple gray octagon. Naruto took the badge gratefully thank you, he looked at the badge then tossed it into the air like a coin then catching it and held it out before him boulder badge acquired. Hi Pikachu. Pikachu cheered with a victory sign. You finally got to do that pose, said Leaf playfully, recalling Naruto wanting to do a pose to look cool after a gym battle and had been practicing it with a coin. That's pretty cool, said one of the children. Thanks, so who are you kids? You kinda resemble Brock, said Naruto. They're my little brothers and sisters, said Brock with pride. Naruto and Leaf looked at them and couldn't help but blush at how it happened given that they had been told about the Pidgey and the Beedrill by their parents what say we head on over to the Pokemon Center to heal the Pokemon, especially mine. Sounds good to me, said Naruto with a shrug. After escorting the kids back home, the group made their way to the center and had their Pokemon over to Nurse Joy to take care of them. They went on to have dinner at the cafeteria and had a chat mainly around the care of their Pokemon and future aspirations. I see. So Naruto wants to be a Pokemon master and Leaf wishes to be the best Pokemon journalist, those are really admirable dreams, said Brock with a sad smile to be honest with you too, it's actually my dream to become a top Pokemon breeder. But I had to take over the gym to support my brothers and sisters and make up for my absent parents. A Pokemon breeder, I get that feeling that you'll be really good at it, said Leaf thoughtfully. Yeah, we'll support your dream just like you support ours. You just need to hang in there and never give up on it, said Naruto. Brock smiled in appreciation thanks you guys, unknown to the trio was that someone else was eavesdropping on them and looked down to the ground as if in shame before walking away. Later on, Naruto and Leaf were standing at the edge of the city, giving it one last look since it would be a long while till they pass through there once again. Well, time to get back on the road then, said Naruto. Yeah, according to Nurse Joy. The next gym is over at Cerulean City, said Leaf, they were just about to take a step when a voice called out to them. Hey, wait up, 
They turned to see Brock running up to them while carrying a large blue backpack with a bedroll scene strapped to it at the top until he finally caught up. Brock, what are you doing out here? Asked Leaf confusedly. It turns out that my dad has been around the whole time but just that he was ashamed to show himself. He offered to watch over the kids so I could fulfill my dream where he failed at his, so I hope that you two wouldn't mind if I join you on your journey, Brock explained. Naruto responded with a smile no problems here, the more the merrier as they always say. Thanks guys, said Brock gratefully, then he joined the duo to form a trio as they resumed the journey to their next destination. As of now, the group were currently hiking up a dirt pathway into direction towards a large mountain which is tall enough to be seen clearly all the way from Pallet Town which Leaf was able to recall. You know, I'm wondering how Mount Moon got its name. I thought it related to a lover's tale since it sounded so romantic, said Leaf, she took a glance at Naruto with a pink tinge on her cheeks. Not really, I heard people say that a huge meteor crashed into the mountain back during the prehistoric times. They called the meteor the Moonstone. I read about that, the Moonstone has the power to make certain Pokemon evolve, said Naruto. Help, a sudden scream interrupted the trio's conversation. They looked at each other then ran quickly in direction of the scream. There they saw a man dressed as a professor curled up on the ground and bat-like Pokemon were flying around him angrily, Naruto brought out his Pokedex to scan. Zubat, the bat Pokemon. Zubat avoids sunlight because exposure causes it to become unhealthy. During the daytime, it stays in caves or under the eaves of old houses, sleeping while hanging upside down. As much as I would like to wonder why they're doing the opposite, we need to help that man. Pikachu used Thundershock to scare the Zubat away. Naruto commanded. Pikachu immediately leapt off his head with cheeks sparking before unleashing a blast of electricity to make the Zubat fly back into the cave, leaving the man alone for them to check on. Are you okay sir? Asked Leaf with concern. The man dusted off his clothes I'm fine, thank you very much brave Pokemon trainers. I am in your debt. No need for that. We just did what anyone else would have done. My name is Naruto Yu. N. Ketchum and this is my buddy Pikachu. She's Leaf and he's Brock. Naruto introduced himself and his friends. I am Seymour the scientist. It is an utmost pleasure to meet you all, said the now named Seymour. Same here, but could you tell us why the Zubat were attacking you in broad daylight? Asked Brock. I can do better and show you the reason. Follow me. Seymour walked into the cave the Zubat went through earlier with the others following him only to be surprised to see that inside was lit up with electric powered lights strung along the ceilings of the cave. What's with the lights? asked Leaf. As you could see, somebody had strung these lights through the whole cave but the Pokemon need the dark and this rapid change in the environment is confusing them, Seymour explained. Which was probably why the Zubat left the cave and attacked you, said Brock thoughtfully. Seymour nodded then gestured to the Pokemon residing in the cave see there, those Paris are planting their mushrooms everywhere and the Sandshrew are getting dried up by the hot lights. Naruto noticed one of the Sandshrew near him panting and was saddened, so he took out a bowl from his backpack and filled it with water from his canteen before placing close to the Pokemon who wasted no time in drinking it all up. Leaf smiled fondly at the blonde's action before turning to speak to Seymour. Did you try to take the lights down? asked Leaf. Seymour nodded in affirmation yes I did but the troublemakers kept replacing them. But what reason would they be here for? I fear it's because of the moon stone. The moon stone, we were just talking about it on our way here, said Brock. I believe so, for the moon stone is so much more than what everyone knows. I always believed that Pokemon came from outer space and arrived here with the moon stone as their spacecraft, and these greedy troublemakers want to steal it from the Pokemon for themselves. Sounds like an original theory, said Leaf with a sweat drop. Naruto listened in as he tended to the Sandshrew hope you're feeling better now, he gently patted the Sandshrew's head as it sighed in contentment, then they heard yet another cry and this one came from a Pokemon. Naruto shot up to his feet and ran down the tunnel with Pikachu following after him. Naruto, wait up, Leaf took off after with Brock and Seymour close behind. Naruto skidded around the corner and narrowed his eyes upon seeing Meowth from Team Rocket looming over a frightened Pokemon which he identified to be a Clefairy quivering in fear with a stone shard held in its hands. Now fork over that moonstone and no one gets hurt, 
Meowth was about to take another step when Naruto stood in between them and glared at the cat Pokemon with Leaf frowning once she caught up with Naruto. You again, what are you doing here? asked Leaf. A talking Meowth, Brock was rather surprised at a Pokemon capable of human speech. Don't bother, this Meowth is a member of Team Rocket and they're nothing but trouble. Then prepare for trouble, Jesse appeared next to Meowth with a pickaxe in hand. James soon joined while holding a shovel and make it double. To defend the W, Naruto stopped them okay, let me stop you right there. We already heard your dumb anthem once and that is enough for us. Pika Pika, Pikachu crossed his arms and nodded in agreement, making the trio glare at them. I'll have you know that our motto is worth hearing, said Jesse in anger. About as worthwhile as a lame 10 second TV commercial, how about you get out of here before you cause any more problems, Leaf scoffed in response. Not until we acquire the Moonstone to power up our Pokemon, James retorted. Then we'll just force you out. Naruto took out Pokeball and readied it then turned to Leaf get Clefairy and the Professor to safety while Brock and I deal with these guys. Okay Naruto, be careful you too, Leaf beckoned the Clefairy and Seymour to follow her out of the cave as Naruto and Brock faced Team Rocket. Ready or not, go Ekans coughing. Jesse and James threw their Pokeballs to call on their Pokemon. Let's go, Scyther. Naruto threw his Pokeball to call on the Mantis Pokemon who stood at the ready with his blades. Here we go, Brock threw his Pokeball to reveal a Zubat, mildly surprising Naruto. Since when did you catch a Zubat? asked Naruto. It was right before we entered the cave. All right then, let's get down to business. Coughing, smog attack, James commanded with coughing expelling dark gas from its body towards Scyther and Zubat. Scyther, flap your wings quickly to blow the smog away then use a combo of quick attack and slash. Naruto called out. Scyther complied and vibrated his wings to blow the smog back then flew forward at high speed and slashed at coughing with one of his blades. Ekans used tackle on Zubat, said Jesse with Ekans lunging at Zubat. Zubat used astonish and then use wing attack. Brock commanded, Zubat let out a loud screech which slammed into Ekans, stopping it before smacking the snake Pokemon away with its wings. Coughing used sludge attack on Scyther, said James. Coughing spewed a blob of toxic sludge at its target. Use double team and follow it up with quick attack. Naruto quickly reacted. Scyther immediately created copies of himself and hid amongst them with the sludge attack missing completely. Coughing looked around in confusion but was blindsided by the real Scyther's attack to be sent crashing into the cave wall and fainting. Jesse growled at this this is not over. Ekans, use rap. Zubat, use supersonic. Zubat let out a screech which caused Ekans to begin moving around in a drunken manner much to Jesse's chagrin as it wasn't listening to her commands now finish it with wing attack. Zubat swooped it and struck Ekans with its wings to knock it out. Jesse and James recalled their Pokemon and ran away from victorious duo. Another score for the good guys, said Naruto, exchanging a high five with Brock. That's the power of teamwork, but I feel like we're missing something, said Brock. Now that you mention it, we forgot about Meowth. He must have snuck off after the others while we were battling. Then we gotta move now. Naruto and Pikachu and Brock ran out of the cave in the direction they saw Leaf and the others go through. They had just exited when they heard a scream and looked up to see Meowth flying in the opposite direction and went on ahead to locate the group near a river to see a vindictive Leaf and her Rattata sitting next to her I guess Meowth was in over his head. Leaf smiled smugly that's one way to say it, I think we should take a small break after everything that happened, especially since it's getting rather late, Brock suggested. Sounds good to me, said Naruto. The group settled down for the meantime, Naruto reached into his bag and took out a container full of Pokemon food then he noticed that Brock also has Pokemon food with him as well you make Pokemon food too. Yeah, it's my very own recipe which I've been constantly improving upon. I guess the same goes for you, said Brock feeding a pellet to Zubat who was perched on his shoulder. Naruto was feeding Scyther as well it's actually a recipe from my mom, she taught me how to cook since she herself runs a restaurant back home so I received two cookbooks with one for humans and the other for Pokemon. Hope you don't mind if I took a look at them. No problem. Then the group heard a rumble from underground and something emerged revealing it to be a Sanshrew which then went over to Naruto and began nuzzle against him rather fondly. 
Leaf was confused at first but then had an idea of why. I think that's the same Sanshru you gave water to, Naruto, said Leaf. Naruto looked at the Sanshru who was nodding to the statement I think you're right, I wonder what it's doing here. My guess is that it has taken a liking to you since you were so nice to it, said Brock thoughtfully. It goes to show how much a kind Pokemon trainer you are, said Seymour. Scyther sigh. Scyther was in agreement, Naruto has shown to be strong and kind to himself and his fellow Pokemon. Well this calls for a commemorative picture, Leaf reached into her backpack and took out a digital camera, then she snapped a picture before noticing Pikachu sitting on a rock and having a conversation with the Clefairy how cute, I'll take a picture of this too. How nice. It makes me wonder what it is they're talking about, said Seymour. Pikachu suddenly stood up and waved to them Pikapi. What's up Pikachu? asked Naruto. Clefairy hopped off the stone and away with Pikachu pointing at the fairy Pokemon Pikachu. Then he followed after it. Seems like Clefairy wants to show us something since Pikachu's telling us to follow, said Naruto, packing up his things and returning Scyther into his Pokeball with the rest following suit then going after the two Pokemon and Sanshru stuck close to Naruto. The group made their way through the forested part of the area as the sun went down and the night began, they emerged into a small clearing to discover another cave with its entrance hidden by vegetation and went through it. They didn't walk for very long as they emerged in an open area where the full moon could be seen clearly above and at the center is a large rock as black as the night sky with numerous smaller shards littered around it. It's the core of the moonstone, said Seymour in wonder. I never would have thought that I would see anything like this, said Brock. This is what it means to go on a Pokemon journey, learn about things few would be lucky enough to buy just staying at home, said Leaf, taking pictures with her camera. Hey guys, Clefairy is doing something, said Naruto, everyone looked to see Clefairy place the stone shard amongst the others. The shards and the giant moon stone glowed in resonance, soon they saw more Clefairy gather around the moon stone and began to dance around it. What do you suppose they're doing? asked Brock curiously. Seymour thoughtfully came up with a theory it seems to me like the Clefairy worship the Moonstone like a deity which would have to do with them collecting its shards which had broken off when it crashed into the mountain, and another evidence is that it's a full moon tonight. I'm guessing that Clefairy had invited us to watch the ceremony, Leaf realized what was going on now. Well before we can enjoy the show, Pikachu, use Thunder Wave behind us. Said Naruto with a frown. Pikachu immediately spun around and fired jolts of electricity at the cave's exit. Yeah, there were screams and someone tumbled out to reveal to the group who were very familiar with. Team Rocket again, said Brock in annoyance. I figured these three are too stubborn to call it quits so I had to keep an eye out should they try to follow us since we were with Clefairy, said Naruto, but the truth of the matter was that he had been using his aura to sense his surroundings and noted that they were spying on them. How? Did? You? No. Jesse muttered through the paralysis. Naruto simply smiled that's for me to know and for you never to find out. After tying Team Rocket up with ropes and put to sleep with Butterfree's sleep powder, the group sat down and watched as the Clefairy continued to dance around the giant moonstone. Then smaller shards hovered into the air and floated over to different Clefairy who touched them delicately and lit up in a bright light before revealing themselves taller and changed. Naruto brought out his Pokedex to scan. Clefairy, the fairy Pokemon. The moonlight that it stores in the wings on its back apparently gives it the ability to float in midair. Clefable, the evolved form of Clefairy. Clefable moves by skipping lightly as if it were flying using its wings. Its bouncy step lets it even walk on water. It is known to take strolls on lakes on quiet, moonlit nights. And it also counts as a ritual for the moonstone chooses who will evolve and who won't, I am learning so much from this single encounter said Seymour excitedly. Same here, I'm really glad that I joined up on this journey, said Brock. We all are, said Naruto with Pikachu curling up on his lap and falling asleep with the rest soon following suit. The next morning, everyone had woken up and went to rinse off back at the river before heading for the exit leading out of the mountain not to mention that he had also called Officer Jenny to pick up Team Rocket as well, the Clefairy and Clefable had also come to see them off. Just this is it, Seymour, said Naruto. What will you be doing from here? Asked Leaf. Well I'll be staying since it's been my lifelong dream to learn about them and the moonstone so that one day, I'll be able to go to space with them, said Seymour. 
Be sure to send us a postcard when you do, said Brock with a smile. Naruto turned to leave when he felt something tug at the bottom of his pants with the same for Leaf's socks, both looked down to see Sanshrew and Clefairy holding on and that wasn't all as three Clefable approached with a moonstone each for Naruto, Brock and Leaf. Seems like they want to give those moonstones to you and those two want to come along, normally I would be against capture but they're the ones that made the choice, said Seymour. Then I can do nothing more than say thanks. Naruto took the moonstone and placed it in his backpack before turning to Sanshru, and welcome to the team, he took out a pokeball and tapped its head with it, the pokeball shook three times before signaling a successful capture and heard the same sound for leaf then the pokedex beeped. Sanshru, the mouse pokemon. Sanshru burrows and lives underground. If threatened, it curls itself up into a ball for protection. This Sanshru is male with the ability sand veil. Moves. Scratch, defense curl, sand attack, roll out. We need to get going Seymour, hope to see you one day, said Naruto. And I wish you all a fruitful journey, said Seymour. The group bade the professor and fairy Pokemon farewell as they left Mount Moon and were now making headway for Cerulean City and to Naruto's second gym to earn his next badge. It didn't take long for them to reach a crossroads, with a signpost pointing the different directions of each route, of particular importance to them the path towards Cerulean City. I guess we're headed the right way with where the sign is pointing, Brock noticed something else and there's something else scribbled there. What's it say? asked Leaf curiously. It says, Gary was here. Naruto is a loser. Both Naruto and Leaf let out a groan at who wrote it something tells me you two know who wrote this. Understatement of the year Brock, we'll tell you about it while we're walking, Naruto replied with a deadpan expression. Looks like we'll soon be arriving at Cerulean City, said Naruto, looking at the map from his pokager as he walked beside Leaf and Brock along the dirt path towards their current destination. Glad to hear that, we're almost out of provisions and need to get our Pokemon patched up at the Pokemon Center after all those battles we've had along the way, said Leaf. You're right, afterwards we can restock before you can prepare for your gym battle, said Brock. Then let's get going. Can't wait to see how the place is like, said Naruto. Pika, Pikachu nodded in agreement with his blonde trainer. Do you know which Pokemon you would be using for the gym battle? Asked Brock. Naruto hummed thoughtfully I know that the Cerulean gym utilizes water type Pokemon so Pikachu is a default choice but I won't be relying on him alone, plus I'll need to keep an eye out for the kind of Pokemon they would use. Sounds like a good plan for now. Brock looked ahead of the road we've finally arrived at the city. True enough, the group are now standing at the entry point into the Cerulean City and there was even a welcome sign which said, the Floral Lagoon City. After receiving directions from the citizens, the group made their way to the Pokemon Center where they handed over their Pokemon to Nurse Joy before going to have lunch over at the cafeteria then going to wait over at the lobby for their Pokemon. Leaf was currently browsing through the internet on her laptop when she came across something interesting and spoke to the boys Hey guys, have you heard about Pokeblocks? Not exactly, only bits and pieces, said Naruto. Brock hummed in thought same here, although I heard that it originates from the Hoenn region. Well according to the Poke Forum, Pokeblocks are colorful candy blocks made for Pokemon. They're mostly used by coordinators to increase a Pokemon's condition for Pokemon contests. There's even a tip that they can also be used in the Safari Zone to make wild Pokemon less likely to escape in battle, said Leaf, reading from the webpage. So how are these Pokeblocks made by the way? asked Brock. They're made by mixing berries together, the flavor and color of the Pokeblocks depends on the kinds of berries used in the mixture. All this sounds interesting, I wouldn't mind trying it out. They were snapped out of their conversation upon hearing the PA call out their names to report to the counter for their Pokemon. They immediately headed there to acquire their Pokemon with Pikachu hopping onto Naruto's shoulder and putting his hat back on. All right buddy, let's head for the gym and win ourselves a badge, said Naruto with a smirk. Pikachu raised a paw into the air excitedly Pikachu. I see you're as pumped up as ever, said Leaf fondly. Sure am, let's go. Well, I need to go do some things in the city so I'll see you guys later, Brock spoke up. You aren't coming with us asked Leaf. Sorry, it's very important. Naruto nodded in understanding it's okay then, wish me luck. Sure thing. Receiving directions from Nurse Joy, 
The trio made their way from the Pokemon Center with Brock taking a different route and were able to locate the Cerulean Gym, however they couldn't help but find the design to be rather tacky in a way with it being a dome-shaped, brightly colored gym with a gigantic painting of a dugong on top of it. But they went inside regardless and noticed that there are quite a lot of people inside. What's going on? Asked Leaf confusedly. I don't know. Let's follow them and find out, Naruto suggested. The duo followed the crowd into what appears to be a performance hall with a large swimming pool at the center as it's some kind of show. Seems like it, but I thought this place is a Pokemon gym. Suddenly the announcer spoke through the loudspeakers for all to hear and now introducing to you, Cerulean City's sensational sisters. The spotlight moved up to the top of a tall diving board, revealing a trio of beautiful girls dressed in one-piece swimsuits. The music started playing with the girls leaping off the diving board into the pool and proceeded to perform a choreography of water ballet with the crowd cheering them on, especially the males. Pika, Pikachu was watching in awe at the performance. I don't mind repeating myself, but isn't this place a Pokemon gym? Asked Naruto. I don't really know, might as well ask around after this show, said Leaf, taking out her camera to record for her blog. The show eventually ended and everyone left the place with Naruto, Leaf and Pikachu checking the place out, they went downstairs and came across a rather impressive aquarium with various water Pokemon swimming about which further questions whether this place is a gym at place. The trio came upon the three swimmer girls from earlier complimenting each other over their performance and were able to identify the blonde one to be Daisy, the brunette is Violet and the pinket is Lily. Oh I'm sorry but if you want an interview, then you'll have to like call our manager said Lily upon seeing them. Although I wouldn't mind having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you cutie, said Violet eyeing Naruto with a sultry look in her eyes. Daisy pouted no fair sis, that was like my intention too. We're not here for an interview, Naruto came here for a gym battle so that he could earn a badge, said Leaf glaring at the three girls. Yeah, do you know where the gym leader is? asked Naruto. Actually, you're looking at them, said Daisy. Huh. We are the sensational sisters. Said Violet. And the cerulean gym leaders. Lily added. The group were taken aback by what they just heard. The sisters led them to a room with a large pool and floating platforms on the water as seats where audience could sit and watch the battle. Since you're the gym leaders, I'd like to challenge you in a Pokemon battle and win your gym's badge, Naruto declared with Pikachu nodding in agreement. The sisters looked at each nervously before Daisy spoke up actually we don't feel like battling anymore. Naruto blinked in confusion what do you mean by that? Well we got beat by trainers who came from this backwards town called Pallet, said Violet, Naruto and Leaf glowered at her for insulting their hometown. Lily continued and our most recent loss was against a guy called Red yesterday, so we had to rush our Pokemon to the Pokemon Center. My eyes were spinning from how fast we lost. Violet held out a Pokeball all we have left is a Goldeen which only knows Horn Attack and nothing more. Not to mention that we barely had any time for ourselves with these battles interrupting us, said Daisy with a pout. Seriously, Naruto muttered lowly, these are gym leaders that actually don't like battling then how on earth did this gym come to be then? So, we came all this way here for nothing? Asked Leaf in annoyance. No worries, we have a solution for this. Lily clapped hands and a Pokemon emerged from the pool, turning out to be a seal which flopped towards her and stuck out its tongue to reveal a badge in the shape of a light blue raindrop here's the cascade badge, you can have it. Naruto shifted his sight between the badge and the girl several times with a blank expression before finally speaking up, are you trying to insult me? The sisters blinked in confusion I said, are you trying to insult me? We like don't understand, said Violet. It is my job as a Pokemon trainer to catch Pokemon and raise them to be as strong as they can be, and it is your role as a gym leader to see we have what it takes and are ready to face any challenges. The badge represents the gym leader's acknowledgement and the symbol of the trainer's hard work, yet here you are simply degrading its worth. Leaf smirked, seeing the flabbergasted look on the girls' faces as Naruto continued to reprimand them. She recalls from her younger days that Naruto is at his happiest when he earns something with hard work and hates taking things without something to show for it, often says that it feels wrong to him. Do you have any idea that doing this puts the lives of novice trainers and their Pokemon in grave danger? W what do you mean? Asked Daisy, a bit afraid of the answer. By handing over the badge without a battle, 
you plant a false sense of confidence into them which in turn leads to getting involved with situations beyond their skills and possibly lose their lives. It was even why the Pokemon League changed the age requirement from 10 to 13 so trainers would be more mature and prepared. Can you really live with the consequences of this action of yours? Asked Naruto sternly. The three sisters could hardly say a word to oppose what Naruto just said as it was the absolute truth and they had been taking things for granted. Looks like you've finally realized what you've been doing was wrong all along, a female voice spoke up, everyone turned to see someone standing at the doorway with a frown on her face. She is a slender girl with a fit build and orange hair held in a spiky ponytail, she wears a yellow top that reveals her midriff red suspenders, denim shorts that stop at her thighs and red sneakers with yellow lining and white laces. Who are you? asked Naruto curiously. The name's Misty and those three over there are my older sisters, said the girl. So why are you like back here? You said you wouldn't return until you've like become a water Pokemon master, said Violet. Misty turned to glare at them I came back because of you three. I was training over at Seafoam Islands when I started hearing gossips of you guys having been giving away badges without having any battles at all. So, I had to return to prevent you from discrediting this gym our parents had built any more than you already have. It took this guy here to make you realize what you were doing was wrong. Well, we, Lily started but was interrupted. I don't want to hear any of your excuses. Misty turned towards Naruto as I am also a gym leader, I accept your gym challenge. Naruto smirked in response now that's what I want to hear. Misty nodded in affirmation let me go and change then, we'll have our battle. Later on, Naruto and Misty were now standing at opposite ends of the pool atop floating platforms with the latter currently wearing a strapless two-piece blue swimsuit and a pair of sandals. So, what are the rules? asked Naruto. We'll both use three Pokemon with only you allowed to substitute in no time limit, said Misty. All right then. Let's get started. Music start. Pokemon Black 2 White 2 Aust. Battle. Gym Leader Kanto. Misty took out a Pokeball Misty calls Seeking. She threw it into the air to open up and a Pokemon to splash into the pool, revealing to be an orange and white, fish-like Pokemon. It has round, dark eyes, prominent pink lips, two small fangs, and a cream-colored horn in the center of its forehead. There are several black markings on its body. Two thick lines under each eye, a large wavy patch on its back, and several speckles near its tail. It has billowing pectoral fins and a pair of tail fins shaped like butterfly wings. Naruto took out a Pokeball Let's Do This Butterfree. He threw it to call on his bug-type Pokemon as it flittered in midair for battle, that's when he noticed that Misty was looking rather uncomfortable. Hey, what's the matter? Oh don't mind her, Misty's scared of bugs, said Violet in amusement. Really? Asked Leaf with a quirked eyebrow. Shut it Violet, you have no idea how creepy bugs are. Misty yelled. Naruto sweat dropped before snapping back into focus anyways, Butterfree used gust. Butterfree flapped his wings furiously to launch a powerful gust of wind towards Seeking. Seeking quickly, dive underwater. Said Misty, Seeking immediately dove and dodged the incoming attack now come out and use Peck. The water Pokemon shot out of the water with its horn aiming at Butterfree. Naruto quickly reacted dodge to the side and used string shot to slow it down. Butterfree flew sideways to evade the peck attack and spewed silk from his mouth to wrap around the seeking several times to restrain its movements now use tackle. Butterfree flew forward, ready to ram into his target. Seeking, use water pulse, said Misty, seeking open its mouth releasing a light blue orb of energy which explodes in the form of water free yourself by using flail. It began to wiggle wildly, soon squirming out of the silk wrapped around it. Butterfree, are you okay? Naruto called out in concern, Butterfree shook his head a few times before turning to confirm that he's okay it's great that you didn't get confused by the attack, now use sleep powder. Butterfree began dispersing blue spores from his body. I don't think so, dive underwater seeking. Misty commanded with the water Pokemon diving in. Use confusion to pull it out of the water. Said Naruto. Butterfree's eyes glowed with purple psychic energy and Seeking was levitated out of the water and exposed to the spores before being put to sleep. What? Misty couldn't believe what's happening Seeking, wake up. Slam it onto one of the platforms and end this with bug bite, 
Butterfree proceeded to slam Seeking several times on the platform before swooping with his mandibles clamping down on the Seeking, damaging it enough to faint. Seeking return, Misty recalled the fainted Pokemon back into its Pokeball before looking at Naruto you're pretty good, but I'm just getting started. Misty calls Staryu, she threw her next Pokeball to call onto a golden brown, starfish-like Pokemon with five appendages which surround an exterior organ called the core resembling a golden metal casing with a red gem in the center, which is held in place by a golden ring looped around Staryu's lower left point. Can you keep going buddy? asked Naruto. Free. Butterfree nodded in affirmation, eager to continue battling. All right but I'll pull you out should things turn sour. This time, I'll be the one to attack. Staryu, use water gun. Staryu releases a spiral of water from the tip of its topmost limit Butterfree who had to dodge it don't give up, keep firing until you finally hit it. Staryu followed up by firing additional shots of water from its other appendages, forcing Butterfree into the defensive and dodging the attacks. I can't attack from close range, best to attack from a distance, Naruto muttered before calling out Butterfree, use string shot. I don't think so, Staryu use rapid spin. Misty commanded, Staryu began spinning quickly like a ninja throwing star and shredded through the string shot before slamming Butterfree into the water now finish it with tackle. The starfish Pokemon collided into Butterfree with the Pokemon unable to take any more damage and fainting. Naruto let out a sigh before recalling Butterfree back into his Pokeball you did your best buddy, leave the rest to us. Pikachu, it's go time. Pika, Pikachu kept his hat on before leaping off Naruto's shoulder onto the floating platform with sparks flying from his cheeks. I was expecting you to use your Pikachu, but I won't back down. Staryu, use Bubble Beam, Misty called out, the jewel in the middle of Staryu's body glows orange and it released blue bubbles from it at Pikachu. Use Thundershock on the bubbles Pikachu, said Naruto, Pikachu quickly fired a blast of electricity towards the incoming bubbles, successfully erasing them before firing another blast at Staryu. Quick, dive underwater, Staryu jumped off the platform into the pool to dodge now use tackle. The starfish shot out of the water to attack. Dodge by using agility, Pikachu began moving at high speed along the platforms whilst evading Staryu's attacks until Naruto called out now knock it away with iron tail. Pikachu's tail turned metallic before spinning round to smack Staryu right in the jewel to send it flying into the water. Hang in there Staryu, use recover, said Misty. Naruto frowned a bit upon seeing Staryu heal itself of its injuries I'll need to inflict enough damage to knock it out or it will simply heal itself again. Misty called out use water gun. Naruto quickly reacted combine both agility and quick attack to get in close Pikachu. The mouse moved at a much greater speed than before whilst avoiding the incoming shots of water now knock it into the water. Pikachu slammed Staryu into the pool before it could react and now use Thundershock. Misty's eyes widened in realization and called out in a panic Staryu, get out of the water. She was too late as Pikachu fired a powerful blast of electricity into the water. Then Staryu floated back onto the surface and laid there unmoving oh no. That's two down and one more, let's keep this momentum going Pikachu, said Naruto. Pika, Pikachu nodded in response, you're pretty good, but I'm not giving up to the very end Misty recalled Staryu into its Pokeball before bringing out her last one Misty calls Starmie. She threw her last Pokeball to call upon a Pokemon similar to Staryu but much larger and resembles two violet starfish with five appendages each. The front starfish has a golden formation in the center. In the center of the golden casing is its red jewel core, which can glow in seven colors and has developed to resemble a cut precious stone. The second starfish is semi-attached to the back of the first and can spin 360 degrees. No doubt that is her strongest Pokemon, plus it's a water and psychic type. Gonna have to play this smart, said Naruto thoughtfully before calling out Hey Pikachu, I need you to return for now. Why is he like calling Pikachu back when he has the type advantage? Asked Lily confusedly. Because it's like him to do so, Naruto acts differently compared to an everyday trainer, said Leaf with a smile. Why did you call Pikachu back? Asked Misty. I wanted to give him a short break but mostly I want to give the next guy a chance to battle or he'll be sulking the rest of the day, said Naruto. Who? The blonde simply smiled and threw the Pokeball to bring out his third Pokemon which of course had a comedic reaction. Eek, another bug and this one has blades. 
Misty shrieked. The Pokemon happened to be Scyther whom seems to be rather offended by the girl's reaction. Now that's just being rude, said Naruto with a small frown. Starmie, use tackle, said Misty. Starmie launched itself while spinning like a throwing star towards Scyther. Use double team and follow up with Leer. Scyther's body became outlined in white and he created multiple copies of himself with Starmie completely missing the real one as it went through a copy then they turned to glare at the Pokemon with eyes glowing red and reduced its defensive power. Take them all out by using Psybeam. Starmie's jewel shine then released a multicolored beam from it at the copies, taking them all out but the real one is nowhere to be seen where is the real one. Naruto smirked use slash. Scyther swooped down from above with his scythes glowing white as he repeatedly slashes Stamie. Use your water gun Starmie. The water Pokemon immediately fired a powerful stream of water at Scyther from a point-blank range which knocked him away from it now use recover. Starmie's whole body glowed yellow and all of the damage on its body disappeared. So, it can use that move too huh, it can be a bit annoying from the opposite end. Better work a way around it. Scyther use focus energy. Scyther took in a deep breath as his body becomes outlined in a light aura. Misty tensed, seeing now that there's now a likely chance of being hit with a critical strike quick Starmie, use Psybeam and don't let Scyther get close to you. Scyther, get in close with agility and then use Fury Cutter. Naruto commanded, Scyther dashed forward, repeatedly vanish and immediately reappears in different spots while dodging the blasts of Psybeam until he was upon Starmie then proceeded to slash at it with each strike doubling in power. Scyther suddenly stopped the assault and calmly flew away with Starmie standing still before collapsing with its jewel blinking, signaling its defeat. Music end. Nicely done Scyther, the training is really paying off, said Naruto fondly, Scyther smiled with pride at winning his first gym battle. They all got off the platform and went to meet with along with Leaf and the others at the poolside. I gotta admit that you're pretty good, even though you were using bugs, said Misty, shivering from the frown by Scyther. Results of good training, this battle helped me learn a few things too, said Naruto. Well a win is a win, here's the cascade badge to represent the gym's acknowledgement of your skills, said Misty holding out the badge whilst glancing towards the sisters who simply looked away. Thanks very much, Naruto took the badge then tossed it into the air like a coin before catching it and held it out before him cascade badge acquired. Hi Pikachu, Pikachu cheered with a victory sign, Scyther nodded in approval. Congratulations, that battle was amazing, said Leaf, having been using her camera to record. So like what will you be doing next Misty, will you continue with your training? Asked Daisy. Yes I will but not before calling the Pokemon League to send in an official to make sure that you are doing your job right. Should have done this before I left the first time, said Misty, making the older sisters nervous from the statement. Well, we'll be on our way now. Good luck with your training, said Naruto. Same here with your journey. Naruto, Leaf and Pikachu were soon out of the gym and were making their way back to the Pokemon Center so Naruto get his Pokemon healed as well as wait for Brock to meet up with them. On their way, the trio took note of some sort of commotion going on and went to check it out. They came across a crowd gathered around a house and the police were sanctioning the area to prevent anyone from entering the building. Leaf approached one of the bystanders to inquire excuse me, may I know what's happened here? A male bystander was the one to respond apparently, the owner of the house was burglarized and the thief is nowhere to be seen. Whoa, sounds rough, said Naruto. I wonder what it is that was stolen. Leaf asked. Naruto shrugged his shoulders and was about to reply when he noticed something from the corner of his eye. He saw someone climb over the wall of a house into the pathway between two houses. He appeared to be a male wearing a black uniform emblazoned with a big red R on it and a black cap, as well as a pair of gray gloves and boots, and a gray belt. Naruto's eyes narrowed upon recognizing the R on the man's uniform and that he's holding something in his hands. I think I found our burglar, Naruto went to follow after the man with Leaf being close behind. Where are you going Naruto? Asked Leaf. I found the thief and he's actually a member of Team Rocket, Naruto replied. The group followed after the rocket grunt all the way to an alleyway before deciding to confront him now that there's lesser risk of bystanders getting injured in the crossfire. Hold it right there, Naruto called. The grunt turned around and frowned upon seeing the two teens what do you brats want? 
We want whatever you stole from that house, said Leaf. Music start. Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green Ost. Battle. Trainer battle. Like I'm gonna listen to a bunch of kids who are biting off more than they can chew, go Machop. He threw a Pokeball to call on the fighting type Pokemon gonna make you regret poking your noses into my business. We'll see about that, take to the skies Pidgeotto. Naruto threw his own Pokeball to call on his flying type as she hovered in the air before him. Machop, use Karate Chop, said the grunt, Machop charged towards Pidgeotto with its hands glowing white with energy for an attack. Push back with Gust Pidgeotto, Naruto commanded, Pidgeotto flapped her wings quickly to launch a powerful gust of wind which disrupted Machop's attack now use wing attack. Her wings blow white before slashing Machop with one of them. The grunt snarled in anger why you little use leer. Machop glared at Pidgeotto with glowing red eyes but the flying type hovered in the air unaffected whatsoever why isn't it working. Pidgeotto's ability is big pecs which prevents any moves from reducing her defensive power. Use quick attack. Pidgeotto swooped towards Machop with great speed as white energy trailed behind her. Quick Machop, use low kick to slow that bird down, said the grunt. Machop reared its leg back to attack the moment the target got close enough within range. Switch to wing attack, Naruto called out. Pidgeotto rapidly switched her flight path to go past Machop to get behind it and knock it face first to the ground with her wings. Machop struggled to get back up but collapsed with swirls in its eyes. The grunt groaned in annoyance as he recalled Machop into its Pokeball useless thing, let's see how you handle my next Pokemon. Go drowsy. Pidgeotto used Gust, Naruto called out, the grunt sneered in response oh no you don't, use disable drowsy. Drowsy's eyes glowed light blue, causing Pidgeotto to be outlined in light blue briefly and she suddenly stopped using the attack. Oh no, Pidgeotto won't be able to use Gust for some time, said Leaf worriedly. Naruto frowned at this gonna have to manage without it for now, Pidgeotto use wing attack. Drowsy, use hypnosis, said the grunt, Drowsy waves its hands, releasing multiple multicolored circles from its face at Pidgeotto which caused her to fall to the ground fast asleep now use pound. Drowsy's hands glow yellow and it hits the sleeping Pidgeotto with them. Naruto gritted his teeth as he brought out his Pokeball Pidgeotto return. He recalling her before any further damage was done Sanshrew, you're up. He threw another Pokeball to call on Sanshrew who appeared ready for battle. Switching Pokemon doesn't change a thing, Drowsy use Hypnosis. Not so fast, Sanshrew used Sand Attack and aimed it at Drowsy's eyes. Naruto commanded urgently, Sanshrew dug his claws into the ground and flung dirt right into Drowsy's face which disrupted its attack. What? The grunt was taken aback by this sudden move. I was keeping an eye out for when you try that move again and adjust it accordingly, now use scratch while Drowsy is still blinded. Sanshrew lunged at Drowsy and proceeded to scratch at it with his claws. Don't just stand there, strike back with pound, said the grunt angrily. Naruto saw Drowsy about to attack and quickly called out Sanshrew, use defense curl then follow up with rollout. Sanshrew quickly curled up into a ball before being pushed back whilst sustaining a small amount of damage 10 he began to roll at the drowsy and slam into it with great speed and power. What the, that move shouldn't be as strong, said the grunt in shock. By using defense curl first, it doubles the power of rollout when used afterwards so guess what's gonna happen now, said Naruto with a smirk. Sanshrew continues to repeatedly attack Drowsy with power increasing from every hit till the psychic was unable to endure any more and collapsed in a faint. Music end. Nicely done Sanshrew, and you're only gonna get better. Said Naruto fondly, Sanshrew jumped up and down while squeaking happily. The rocket grunt took a step back in shock at what just happened, a brat actually beat him I'm getting out of here. He returned the Drowsy to its Pokeball and turned to run away. Oh no you don't. Pikachu used Thunder Wave. Pikachu leapt from Naruto's shoulder and fired a weak jolt of electricity towards the grunt, making him fall to the ground paralyzed now then, let's see what you were trying to get away with, Naruto and Leaf took Tay item from the grunt and were surprised to see what it is. That's a TM case, and it contains a lot of TMs too, said Leaf. No doubt, he wanted to use these TMs to teach his Pokemon powerful moves, said Naruto. Closing up the TM case go and get Officer Jenny while we keep him company, Leaf Chan. Okay, 
I'll be back soon. Leaf quickly left the alleyway while Naruto leaned back against the wall and kept an eye on the immobilized grunt. Some time later, Officer Jenny had arrived to take the grunt to the police station then had Naruto and Leaf follow her to meet the owners of the burglarized house which turned out to be an elderly couple to return the TM case, they were so grateful that they offered a TM as a reward. Naruto tried to refuse but had to take one due to their insistence, so he was given a TM-28 which teaches the move dig and learnt that unlike in the past the TMs are now reusable. Hey guys, how did your gym battle go? Asked Brock as he entered the Pokemon Center and met up with the duo at the lobby. See for yourself, Naruto revealed his newly acquired Cascade badge I was able to win after a good battle with the gym leader. Congrats with the win, Leaf looked through the map app on her Pokager according to the map, the next gym is in Vermilion City. Then that's our next stop, we already purchased provisions for the trip so we're good to go, said Naruto. Geez, just how thick can this fog be? Asked Leaf, wondering about their current predicament. It has been a couple of days since they had left Cerulean City for Vermilion City in Naruto's next gym battle when the trio found themselves being slowed down by the weather. I would say thicker than soup, Naruto mused. Pika, Pikachu waved a paw at the fog to see if he could grab it, only for his paw to go through it instead. Then we say we take a break for now to wait it out or we might end up getting lost, said Brock already setting up the tableware to begin cooking as much as I'd like to get cooking, I'm gonna need some firewood. In that case, I'll go and search for some, said Naruto, getting up from his seat with Pikachu climbing to his shoulder. I'm coming too, would make things easier if we work together, said Leaf. Okay then, Naruto and Leaf set out and began picking up the firewood but had to make sure that they were dry enough to burn. So far they had gathered a sufficient amount and were about to return to Brock when Pikachu noticed something in the distance and tapped Naruto's cheek to grab his attention. What's up Pikachu? asked Naruto. Pika Pikachu, the electric mouse pointed at a certain direction for them to look, there they saw a soft glow of light through there. Naruto released a pulse of his aura and soon detected several signatures seems like there are a group of people over there. In this fog, I wonder why, said Leaf thoughtfully. Let's go and find out. The duo approached the glowing light to come across a group of boys dressed in school uniforms albeit one of them was running on a treadmill while surrounded by the rest. It appears that they were quizzing the one running, so far the boy was doing alright till they asked at which level a Pidgey evolves when he slipped and fell off the treadmill. Can you really call yourself a Pokemon Tech student when you can't answer a question like this one? Why are we even bothering ourselves with someone like you? said the older student with contempt. The younger student stared at the ground in shame I'm sorry. Hey, just what is going on here? They turned to see Naruto and Leaf approach with frowns on their faces. This is a private training session which doesn't concern the likes of you, there's no room for losers in our school. We're trying to maintain our standards, said the older student. Leaf gently helped the boy up from the ground before glaring at the older students I don't know or care about the kind of standards that your school has but Naruto and I won't approve of how you're treating him. Call it however you want to see it, your opinions don't mean a thing to us. Let's go guys, no point wasting our time. See you later at school Joe, the students walked away with a prideful stride, leaving the boy with Naruto and Leaf. Leaf turned to speak with the boy whose name is Joe are you okay? Joe nodded in affirmation I'm okay, my name's Joe. Who are you two? My name's Leaf and he's Naruto with his partner Pikachu, said Leaf with Naruto and Pikachu waving at Joe in greeting. So who were those guys? asked Naruto. Those were the infamous tech students, a voice spoke up, revealing to be Brock I was wondering what was taking you two so I came to check up on you. Sorry about that Brock, but the name sounds kinda familiar, said Naruto thoughtfully. We heard of it back at Pallet Town, it's called Pokemon Technical or Pokemon Tech for short. It's a boarding school for exceptional students who wish to become Pokemon trainers, a guarantee to directly enter the Pokemon League without having to travel around to collect badges. I also read that the entrance and tuition fees are very expensive due to its high standards. Sounds like a rather lazy shortcut if you ask me, where is this school anyways? Asked Naruto with a quirked eyebrow. It's right over there said Joe, pointing ahead of them. Suddenly the fog began to clear, 
revealing that they had been standing right in the middle of the school campus itself the fog was actually part of a simulation for training in the weather. We'd like to know why those guys were making you run on a treadmill while asking questions, I find it rather odd, said Leaf. My friends were just trying to help me, said Joe. Brock frowned at this with friends like those, who needs enemies. But they help me learn how Pokemon evolve and learn particular moves upon reaching certain levels. Sometimes, I even pretend that I don't know the answers as the questions would get much harder. My mom and dad worked hard and saved money so I could come to school here, Joe explained. But that kind of help wouldn't be doing you any favors besides striking at your self-confidence, what do the teachers say about this? Asked Leaf. They don't know, but if they do then they would pretend to be unaware of it. Naruto frowned at this and Pikachu wasn't pleased with it either I gotta agree with Leaf Chan that this system is doing more harm than good for the students here, I'd like to meet the person in charge so I can put a stop to this. Joe reached into the pocket of his jacket and held out a photo here's her picture, everyone looked to see a picture of a rather pretty girl about his and Leaf's age. Wow, she's so pretty, said Brock with a dreamy look on his face, but got smacked in the back of the head by annoyed Leaf. Will you stay focused? Geez, Leaf groaned why you even carry her picture around. Joe responded sheepishly I may hate the way she treats us but I like the way she looks. Naruto rolled his eyes at that seriously man. Think you can take us to meet her? Sure, I need to warn you though. Giselle is ranked as the top beginner here in the tech. What exactly do you mean by rankings? Asked Brock. Those in the beginner class has the same qualifications of a trainer with two badges, the intermediate class has the qualifications of a trainer with four badges, advanced students has the qualifications of a trainer with six badges. Once a student graduates from Pokemon Tech, they earn a diploma and automatically qualify for Kanto's Pokemon League Conference, Joe explained. Sounds interesting and all, but let's go find this girl and see what we can do about this dumb system, said Naruto. Okay. It's this way, Joe guided them towards the main school building and took them to an elevator which took them up several floors before stopping. They stepped into a room to a lot of computers placed in rows of two and there's even a battlefield at the center of the room, the group then heard mild sounds of commotion which meant that someone is here I think Giselle's around since she often comes here to practice. They located the source of the commotion and sure enough, they found Giselle along with the very same group of boys from before and they seemed to be amused about something. They turned to see Naruto and Ko walking but Giselle focused mostly towards Joe who became a bit nervous. Are you Giselle? asked Naruto. Indeed I am. Giselle got up from her seat and curtsied I'm the top student in the beginning class of the most exclusive club in the world, Pokemon Tech. It's sad that others aren't blessed with my beauty, my talent, my humble attitude. People call me a star, but I'm just Giselle. Wow, ain't she full of it, thought Naruto and Leaf. Giselle approached Joe with a small frown on her face my classmates told me what happened Joe and I must say, I am quite disappointed. Huh, Joe was taken aback with shock. I've been looking over your performance and test results which show that you've been falling behind. If you don't shape up, you'll be left behind and never graduate which would bring shame to us all. Giselle turned away from Joe with the boy simply there as the tendrils of despair began to wrap around his heart. It shouldn't be a surprise with how faulty and stupid this kind of tutoring system really is, Naruto spoke up, getting Giselle and the other students to face him. What did you say? Giselle frowned at the blonde trainer and his Pikachu. Did I say stutter? I said your system is pathetic and nothing more than sophisticated bullying. I don't know who you are, but that doesn't give you the right to criticize how I do things in this school. Leaf scoffed more like this should have been done in the first place and you wouldn't be this egotistical. Giselle simply smiled goes to show how much you know, no doubt you aren't aware that Pokemon are only as strong as the trainer who raises them. A Pokemon that's weaker but better trained can still win, depending on the trainer, Giselle glanced towards Joe I hope you're learning something from this Joe. A Pokemon's level of training is just as important a factor as a Pokemon's type in deciding a match, a first class Pokemon trainer can calculate that. Naruto stepped forward to confront the so-called top student now hold on there there's so far more to training a Pokemon than simply calculating levels. And who might you be? Asked Giselle. My name is Naruto Yu. N. Ketchum and she's Leaf Green, we're both from Pallet Town. 
Then how long have you been on your Pokemon journey? Naruto hummed in thought for a moment before answering give or take, about one month and three weeks, I've earned the Boulder Badge and the Cascade Badge. Giselle gasped in faux shock that long and you let your Pikachu out free without taming it. Maybe your Pokemon are training you instead since you're letting it wear a hat. First of all, Pikachu is a guy. Second of all, he doesn't like being inside his Pokeball and prefers to be outside which is fine by me. I always consider the opinions of my Pokemon. Which is how many by the way? Asked Giselle. In addition to Pikachu, I have five Pokemon with me, said Naruto. That's all you have. New trainers at this point would have six Pokemon and yet you won two badges with only five. Seems like you've been having a lucky break, wouldn't you agree? The student Sans Joe agreed to Giselle's statement. That's not true. Naruto earned those badges because he trained his Pokemon very well, said Leaf, angry at Naruto's efforts being downplayed like that. Then under normal circumstances, Pikachu should be at level 25 and had learnt Thunderbolt, but I can tell it hasn't learnt it yet, said Giselle. Chu, Pikachu glared at the girl who doesn't know his true capabilities and yet is acting like she does. We could keep on talking which would take up a lot of time or we could have a Pokemon battle to see who's in the right once and for all, said Naruto, Pikachu jumped off his shoulder to the ground and stood at the ready to battle with sparks emitting from his cheeks. Giselle smiled arrogantly and brought out a Pokeball then this Pokemon will be more than a match for you, Cubone Go. She threw the Pokeball to bring out what appears to be a small bipedal dinosaur-like Pokemon with a light brown hide that covers most of its body except for its cream-colored belly. Two small claws with one on each hand to serve as its thumbs and one large nail on each foot make up its toes. It has two small spikes on its back and a short tail. On its head, Cubone wears a skull which has two rounded horns on the top of its head and a tooth-like point on the lower sides as a helmet which hides its face save for its triangular black eyes and a small area surrounding them. It also carries a bone with it. Naruto took out his Pokédex to scan the Pokémon and was saddened upon hearing the info. Cubone, the lonely Pokémon. A ground type. Cubone wears a skull as a helmet, concealing its face as it sheds tears for its long-lost mother. It cries loudly to express its loneliness. It also always carries a long, thick bone. Music start. Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green Aust, Battle. Trainer Battle. Let's stay focused and win this buddy, start off with quick attack. Naruto commanded. Pikachu immediately complied as he dashed forwards at high speed with white energy trailing behind him. Cubone, use growl, said Giselle. Cubone opened its mouth and lets out a loud cry that releases white shockwaves, disrupting Pikachu's attack now use Bone Club. Naruto saw Cubone rush up to Pikachu with its bone raised to strike and quickly called out to him Pikachu, use agility to get away from Cubone then retaliate with tackle, Pikachu listened in time to blur out of sight then reappear to slam into Cubone from the side. Not bad, let's see how you handle this. Cubone, use Leer, said Giselle. Cubone glared at Pikachu intently with glowing red eyes through its skull helmet. Close your eyes buddy, said Naruto. Pikachu immediately complied and was able to avoid the effects of the leer. Giselle smiled haughtily now you're vulnerable, Cubone use headbutt. Cubone rushed forward and slammed headfirst into Pikachu, knocking him back. Hang in there Pikachu and use Thundershock. Pikachu got up and fired a bolt of lightning at Cubone which was deflected to the side by Cubone's bone. Giselle laughed haughtily surely you don't mean to tell me that you're unaware that ground types are immune to electric type attack, are you? Cubone use bone club, Cubone rushed towards Pikachu, ready to strike. Naruto remained ever determined and called out once more use thundershock again and this time aim at the ground before Cubone. Pikachu complied to the commanded and fired another bolt to create a small hole on the ground which Cubone stepped into and tripped while dropping his bone strike now with quick attack. Pikachu rapidly closed in and slammed into Cubone with a high-speed tackle. Everyone was shocked at what just happened, especially Giselle B but how? Naruto and Pikachu smirked with the former speaking I'm aware of the ground type's immunity to electricity, but I used your own arrogance against you to set you up for a trap. There's a difference between knowing a move and how to use a move. It's just like Naruto to pull off something like this, he really moves at his own pace and the Pokemon comply with it as well said Brock, recalling the battle he had back in Pewter City. I know, 
I remember he won our games back home through methods no one would have come up with, said Leaf, watching the battle attentively. Cubone, hurry and get your bone back, said Giselle urgently. Cubone got up and ran for its bone laying nearby. Not gonna happen as it's already over, Pikachu use iron tail. Naruto called out. Pikachu rushed towards Cubone as his tail took on a metalis sheen and leapt into the air with a somersault. Just as Cubone reached for its bone, Pikachu slammed his hardened tail right on its head, making it collapse to the ground with swirls in its eyes which marked the end of the battle. Music end. Giselle shakily held out her Pokeball towards her fainted Pokemon, Cubone return, she recalled it back into the ball I never read of a Pikachu being capable of learning Iron Tail or even using Thundershock in such a way. It goes to show that books won't always hold all the answers, technically books are the records of what trainers experienced in the past. I train my Pokemon to be ready to go against anything especially type mismatches, they believe in me just as much as I believe in them and we both learn so many things as we go about our journey. My Pokemon and I don't like taking shortcuts like what this school offers but rather take things head on with hard work and determination. Amazing, said Joe in awe of the battle while the other students were in shock. I hope this helps you realize how flawed your system is and to help your fellow students at a steadier pace with no bullying involved, said Leaf wanting to make that they got the message clearly before they left. Giselle nodded in understanding I see now there's more to battling than what's written in the textbooks. But I won't downplay your skills though, we both still have a lot to learn as trainers, said Naruto with a foxy grin, getting Giselle to smile as well. I've decided, Joe spoke I'll go home and start fresh as a Pokemon trainer by going on a journey like you Naruto, I'm sure to learn more than here. That's cool Joe, but remember that you don't exactly have to travel alone either, said Naruto. Soon it was time for Naruto and others to be on their way for Vermilion City while Joe began making plans to return home to properly restart his career as a Pokemon trainer and explain the reasons for doing so to his parents. Giselle watched Naruto leave with a thoughtful look on her face him, perhaps I should take a small break to decide on what would be my next step, she took out the Pokeball containing Cubone and looked at it in silence. Ah man, should have known better than to attempt taking a shortcut through the forest to Viridian City, Naruto lamented, looking at the map app on his Pokager with a frown on his face. Pikapi, Pika Pikachu, Pikachu patted Naruto's head as a way of trying to cheer him up. Cheer up Naruto, I'm pretty sure that something good will come out of this, said Leaf. Brock nodded in agreement she's got a point there, I recall a saying that people view a traveler in two ways, either he's one who gets lost or the one that explores the unknown. Then I hope it's the latter. Naruto muttered before taking a seat on a rock with the others soon following suit. The group were about to settle down for the moment when they heard something rustling within a nearby bush then a Pokemon emerged from it and scampered over to a stream nearby to drink from it. Oh look, it's an Oddish. Leaf brought out her Pokedex to scan the Pokemon. Oddish, this Pokemon is typically found roaming the forest, scattering pollen as it walks around. I've been holding off on catching an Oddish for a while this is the perfect chance for me to catch one. Leaf eagerly took out a Pokeball and prepared to throw it. Guess the detour was useful after all, Naruto mused. Let's go, Rattata. Leaf threw the Pokeball into the air, calling upon said Pokemon who stood at the ready start off with Tail Whip and then follow it up with several quick attack. Rattata wagged its tail towards Oddish so as to reduce the grass type's defense power before dashing at high speed whilst leaving a white trail of energy behind it repeatedly slamming into Oddish from multiple directions, leaving no chance for Oddish to counterattack or defend itself. It's weakened, now it's time for me to catch a new friend. Leaf brought out a Pokeball and threw it. The Pokeball was about halfway when something intercepted and knocked it away from Oddish to clatter to the ground. Naruto's eyes widened in shock and shot up from his seat upon seeing the Pokemon that stood in between Oddish and Rattata so as to protect the latter. No way, all the way out here. He brought out his Pokedex to scan the Pokemon just to make sure that he wasn't seeing things. Bulbasaur, a strange seed was planted on its back at birth. The plant sprouts and grows with this Pokemon. Closing square bracket. Is that really a wild Bulbasaur? I thought they're extremely rare to find besides being handed out as starters to beginning trainers, said Brock confusedly. The Bulbasaur snarled before launching a barrage of razor-sharp leaves from the bulb on its back towards Rattata. Jump out of the way, 
said Leaf urgently. Rattata leapt into the air to avoid the incoming projectiles, but the Bulbasaur followed up with a pair of thick green vines which stretched out and grabbed Rattata in midair and proceeded to slam it repeatedly onto the ground until the Pokemon was knocked out. Oh no my poor Rattata! Leaf quickly recalled the fainted Pokemon by into the Pokeball with concern. Man, that Bulbasaur is pretty good! Naruto stared at the grass-type Pokemon who continued to snarl at them before following after the recovered Oddish into the bushes to escape from them let's go after them. Pika, Pikachu scampered after his trainer in pursuit of the two grass Pokemon. Wait for us, Brock and Leaf ran after the duo and soon caught up with him. Their search for the Pokemon eventually took them to a footbridge, spanning over a very deep trench with rushing water being heard below to the other side. That's weird. The map didn't say anything about a bridge here, said Leaf, checking on her poke gear. Maybe it was recently built, then again the bridge doesn't exactly look very stable like it hasn't been maintained in quite a while, Brock pointed out upon looking a bit more closely at the bridge. Naruto hummed in thought as he looked at the bridge, working on a solution to get them across to the other side, then he snapped his fingers upon coming up with an idea as he took out a pokeball from his belt butterfree, I need you. He tossed it into the air to call said bug Pokemon. Free free, Butterfree fluttered before the blonde, eagerly awaiting his orders. I need you to use your string shot on the ropes. Butterfree nodded in affirmation and proceeded to launch his silk along the bridge's ropes, the others were confused at first but Brock soon figured out the reason why Naruto was doing so. I get it now, you're having Butterfree use his silk to strengthen the ropes to that they won't break when we're crossing the bridge, said Brock. Naruto nodded in response yeah, it's a lesson that my mom taught me, it never hurts to be extra careful. That's just like her, said Leaf. After safely crossing the bridge to the other side, the group resumed their search for the Bulbasaur and Oddish but things started getting weird for them. They were falling into hidden pitfalls and snare traps. Guessing that I'm not the only one who thinks that someone set up these traps for a reason said Naruto who's currently dangling upside down due to his leg having been caught by yet another snare trap. You're not wrong about that, whoever it is must really not want any strangers around, said Brock, keeping any eye out for any more hidden traps. Well, all the traps are doing is getting me annoyed, Leaf added, patting the dust off her skirt much to her displeasure. Naruto reached into his back pocket and brought out a Swiss army knife which he used to cut the rope then landed safely on the ground with a forward roll this rather piques my curiosity instead of driving me away. Same here, curiosity is the trait of a Pokemon journalist. Let's just hope that it doesn't get us into trouble, Brock advised the duo. Despite falling into several more traps, the group eventually came upon a cabin house in the middle of a clear with a lake nearby. There, they saw a woman tending to some Pokemon until she noticed them and became quite frightened. W who are you and how did you get here? Asked the woman fearfully. Naruto waved his hands in a placating manner woe there, calm down. We're not here to cause any trouble. You're not. Leaf nodded in response yeah, we were just trying to find what was so important that there were so many traps. The woman appeared to have calmed down a bit so, you're not here to catch the Pokemon. Not really. Since you're asking that question, said Brock, trying to keep his blush under control considering the current situation can you tell us who you were in about this place? Oh, my apologies, my name is Melanie and this place is the Pokemon village where Pokemon that are sick or were abandoned come here for healing and rest then they leave, the woman introduced herself. Wow, a pretty name for a pretty lady, Brock swooned before being whacked in the head by an annoyed leaf. Cut that out, Brock said leaf angrily that explains the traps from before you were just trying to prevent intruders from coming to steal the pokemon here melanie nodded yes and i'm hoping that you wouldn't catch any of the pokemon where you're here we won't we could even lend a hand around the place while we're here you guys are okay with it asked brock naruto shrugged his shoulders i don't mind plus it's only right that we help you he and Brock set to work on cooking food for the Pokemon after the former let out his own to rest or help them out along the way. Leaf went on to groom and clean the Pokemon near the lake albeit they were still anxious around her but she figured that they will eventually warm up to her one baby step at a time, she let out her own Pokemon as well with her Bulbasaur and Clefairy sticking close to her while Rattata decided to explore the place being naturally curious about things. Meanwhile, 
Naruto's Pokemon were also doing their own thing. Pidgeotto was perched atop a branch of a tree which Scyther was currently sitting underneath its shade with both calmly surveying the area. Butterfree flittered about to explore the place whilst Pikachu and Sandshrew tried to mingle with the Pokemon here. Leaf was brushing the fur of one of the wild Rattata when she heard something from behind her and looked to see an Oddish which she quickly recognized Wait, you're the Oddish from before. Oddish Odd, the grass Pokemon nodded nervously. I'm really sorry about before, Rattata and I thought you were a wild Pokemon and we wanted to catch so you can be our friend. Oddish, I had been wanting to catch an Oddish for a while now and seeing you was a chance I didn't want to let slip plus I like grass types a lot although I'm still open-minded to catching other types, Leaf stretched out a hand to Oddish so what you do say, can we start over the right way this time? Before Oddish could reply, Leaf's Bulbasaur suddenly extended her vines to grab her trainer and lifted her into the air right before something rushed at where she was before, revealing to be the same Bulbasaur from earlier. Bulba Bulbasaur Leaf's Bulbasaur demanded why Bulbasaur was trying to attack her trainer with the Pokemon simply growling at her and looked ready to fight. Hey, what's going on? Naruto ran over to stand in between them and try to learn the cause of the problem. I don't know either, I was apologizing to Oddish for what happened before when Bulbasaur attacked from out of nowhere. Naruto felt something and looked down to see Bulbasaur pushing his head against his leg as if trying to drive him away just what's your deal against us? Melanie approached them with a sad expression please don't be upset with Bulbasaur, it's just that he was trying to protect Oddish. What do you mean by that? asked Leaf. You see, Bulbasaur had taken it upon himself to be the protector of the village, I've never seen such a brave, loyal and determined Pokemon like him. But the thing is that Bulbasaur doesn't like Pokemon trainers due to having been abandoned by his trainer. Naruto looked down at Bulbasaur who still continued to push against his leg damn those trainers, they don't have a single clue on what it means to be a Pokemon trainer if they're so willing to abandon these Pokemon. It's really awful, said Leaf sadly. Sometime later, Naruto and Brock were done cooking and served everyone with their food. Pokemon found the food to be quite delicious with Melanie requesting for the recipe which they kindly gave to her. Pikachu and the others were finishing their meal when the former noticed that Bulbasaur was glaring at them and decided to confront the Pokemon. Asterisk 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 Pokemon translation on asterisk asterisk. Okay, why do you keep glaring at us? Asked Pikachu. Why do you keep hanging around him? Don't you know that he'll eventually abandon you the moment you no longer meet his standards or he gets a better Pokemon? Said Bulbasaur angrily. Pikachu frowned in response I don't see that happening. Naruto is different compared to the other humans. He won't abandon any of us. That's what they all said and yet look at these Pokemon here, this is what we got for our loyalty. I sympathize with what you have all gone through, but do not let the actions of several represent the majority. Naruto is the opposite of those humans, he is loyal to us just as we are loyal to him, said Scyther in a calm masculine voice. Stop saying mean things about him said Butterfree with a squeaky voice Naruto has been very nice to us. He helped me achieve my dream of becoming a Butterfree back when I was a Caterpie. Bulbasaur scoffed at that more like being worthwhile tools until he has no more use for you. That's where you're wrong, Pidgeotto spoke up in a feminine tone from her perch were with Naruto because we chose to be him, there's no doubt he would let us go should we decide to leave. However, I don't see any of us doing that anytime soon. Naruto helped me when I was in trouble, he didn't do it while expecting anything in return. That's what made me want to be with him, said Sandshrew, disliking the negative view that Bulbasaur has towards his trainer. I can say that Naruto is a great person to be with, he trains us but not beyond our limits, willing to spend time with us in any way. He even protected me from danger on the very day we meet for the first time. I know there are bad humans, but Naruto is not one of them said Pikachu with finality with the others nodding agreement with him. Bulbasaur scowled at them before walking away seems to me that I'm wasting my time, you'll eventually see that I was right all along. Geez, what crawled into his bulb? Butterfree grumbled. It's clear to see that the pain of betrayal had left a scar on him, said Scyther. I didn't see any scars, said Butterfree confusedly. It's a figure of speech, Pidgeotto explained with a sigh at the bug Pokemon's naivete. Asterisk 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 Pokemon translator off asterisk asterisk. Bulbasaur walked while grumbling to himself, 
annoyed at how those Pokemon ignored him and continued to believe that their so-called trainer will never abandon them, if they knew the truth then they would save themselves from the pain of betrayal. Bulbasaur looked around and noticed that the very person whom they were arguing about was nowhere to be seen save for his friends who were currently talking to Melanie, agitating the grass Pokemon even further. Bulba, Bulbasaur began to search for the human so as to make sure that he wasn't up to no good when no one is looking. He walked around for quite a bit until he finally found the human sitting cross-legged in the middle of a small clearing with his eyes, showing no signs of movement save for the slow rising and falling of his chest as he took in deep breaths before letting them out. Grumbling in annoyance, Bulbasaur approached the human with a vine extended to wake him out of whatever it was he was doing so as to make him return to the others when the Pokemon suddenly felt a sense of calm which was easing him of his anger much to his confusion. Bulbasaur then noticed that the feeling was originating from the human before him but couldn't figure how that was possible. Suddenly, Naruto's eyes snapped open and turned his head in the direction of where the others are before jumping to his feet and running towards them. Bulbasaur ran after him while wondering at the rapid change in behavior but eventually got his answer as there were a group of strangers, strangers who were not supposed to be here. Apparently, the human and his friends were familiar with these group of men wearing black jumpsuits with a large red R on the chest and black hats, along with grey boots and gloves since they were standing protectively in front of Melanie and the other Pokemon. So the rumors were true, there really is a hidden village with all the Pokemon we can get, said a grunt with greed in his voice. How did they get past the traps? asked Melanie worriedly. Another of the grunts scoffed in response you may have gotten us by surprise with those traps at first, we were able to avoid them altogether. Leaf glared at the thug sorry to disappoint you but there are no rare Pokemon here. Like we would believe that, you must be hiding them somewhere so we'll just have to get rid of you brats first before finding them for the boss. Brock took out a Pokeball whilst Leaf and Naruto's Pokemon stood by their trainers to help them we won't let you have your way. Go Onyx, he threw the Pokeball to call on the giant rock snake Pokemon for battle. We'll see about that, let's get em boys. The grunt threw a Pokeball with the others following suit, revealing their Pokemon to be Beedrill, Raticate, Fero, and Pinsir. Music start. Pokemon fire red and leaf green ost, battle. Trainer battle. Beedrill. Get those brats by using Poison Sting. A grunt called out, Beedrill's needle arms glowed purple before launching a barrage of purple arrows towards the group. Onyx, block that Poison Sting while using Harden. Brock quickly responded, Onyx's body glowed for a moment as it moved into position and deflected the incoming projectiles with hardly any damage inflicted on it. Raticate, attack with bite attack. Raticate lunge at the group with its teeth bared to attack. Bulbasaur, Use Vine Whip to stop that Raticate and slam it to the ground. Leaf's Bulbasaur extended her vines to intercept the Raticate, grabbing it in midair before strongly slamming it to the ground. The Raticate got up to attack again only to be knocked back from a tackle attack by Bulbasaur who was displeased with the presence of Team Rocket. Bulbasaur. The grass Pokemon growled at the grunts. This little runt thinks he can take us on a. Eh? Firo. Use Peck on that walking bush. A grunt sneered in command. The Fero swooped at Bulbasaur and began attacking repeatedly with its beak as Bulbasaur hopped left and right to avoid getting hit by the flying type move which could hurt him a lot. Pidgeotto, get Fero away from Bulbasaur by using quick attack. Naruto called out, Pidgeotto immediately complied as she took off at high speed with white energy trailing behind her then slammed strongly into Fero from its blind side, knocking it away from Bulbasaur nice one. Why you little, Pinsir use focus punch on those brats. The rocket grunts Pinsir ran with one of its fists glowing white and landed a hit on Onyx, making it roar in pain. Hang in there Onyx, use rock throw. Said Brock with the rock type Pokemon slamming its tail into the ground and rocks flew out and knocked the Pinsir away. Bulbasaur, use razor leaf on Raticate. Leaf's Bulbasaur launched a barrage of sharp leaves to strike the grunts Pokemon much to his chagrin. Raticate, use super fang on that brat's Pokemon. The grunt growled. Raticate lunged with its teeth bared to attack. Naruto was quick to intercept with a command Scyther, use Vacuum Wave to stop that Raticate. Scyther channeled energy into his claws before swinging them to launch an X-shaped slash wave which struck its target, knocking out of the battle that's one down. 
Bulbasaur was preoccupied with fighting the other Pokémon that he failed to realize that the Grunt's Beedrill had snuck up from behind until it was too late when the Grunt gave out a command Beedrill, use Twineedle on that Pokémon. Grass-type turned around only for his eyes to widen in shock as the Beedrill closed in with its needle arms poised to strike, everything suddenly went into slow motion with the bug Pokémon getting closer, when it was suddenly blindsided by a shoulder tackle from Naruto. Bulbasaur, are you okay? Asked Naruto urgently, keeping a close eye on the recovering Beedrill. Bulbasaur didn't reply, looking at the supposedly bad human who had saved him and recalled how Pikachu and the others regarded him suppositively. Hang on while I deal with this one, Pikachu used Thundershock. Naruto called out, Pikachu quickly fired a blast of electricity, zapping the Beedrill to the point of fainting which left their opponents with one last Pokemon to battle Butterfly, use confusion on Firo. Butterfree's eyes glowed with purple psychic energy and Firo was enshrouded in a purple aura, restraining it in midair. All right, use bind on Firo, Onyx. Brock commanded. Onyx wasted no time in wrapping its body around the bird-type Pokemon and proceeded to squeeze it tightly until it couldn't endure any more and fainted. Music end. I can't believe this, we've just been beaten by a bunch of kids. Said one of the rocket grunts in disbelief. Let's get out of here. The grunts turned to escape but Naruto wasn't having any of that. Not so fast, you know what to do Pikachu. Said Naruto, Pikachu used Thunder Wave to paralyze the Pokemon thieves before they went on to tie them up for Leaf to contact Officer Jenny to come over and pick them up. This oughta teach these guys not to go stealing Pokemon, they won't know who would be waiting to lay the beat down on M, right guys? Naruto smirked at his Pokemon cheering in agreement with him. Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur was actually smiling at Naruto for the first time since they had come to the hidden village, showing that he had finally warmed up to them seeing as they were different from other humans. And we see what you mean about Bulbasaur being a guardian now, willing to fight those guys Pokemon without hesitation shows how much he loves this place. Melanie smiled in response Naruto, don't you agree that Bulbasaur would be a great addition to your team? He would, I see an amazing Pokemon in him. But I can't force him to leave this place, it won't be right for you or the other Pokemon. I know, which is exactly why Bulbasaur should go with you, said Melanie, surprising everyone especially Bulbasaur himself. Bulba, Bulbasaur turned to Melanie, wondering why she said that as she carried him in her arms. Bulbasaur has been protecting the village for so long, but this place is just too small for his bulb to grow. He needs to go to the outside world to do just that and achieve the potential that we both see in him. Please do me this favor, take Bulbasaur on your journey with you, I just know that he would be a good companion for you and your Pokemon. But who will be here to protect you and the Pokemon? Asked Brock in concern. It's true that Bulbasaur had been protecting the village but the problem was that he did his job too well. After recovering. Pokemon are supposed to return to the wild and later be caught by worthwhile trainers, but this place had become too safe that they don't want to leave. Taking care of sick Pokemon will always be my mission, I know full well that my job isn't finished until they've returned to where they came from, so it is the day when a Pokemon leaves that it is the most rewarding cause it shows that my efforts were not in vain. I understand what you mean Melanie, but the final decision falls down to the Pokemon in question. Naruto bent down to face Bulbasaur eye to eye so what's it going to be Bulbasaur, would you like to come with me and give being a trainer's Pokemon another shot? I assure you that, should you wish to return here, I won't hesitate to do so. It's your call. Bulbasaur looked down in thought, thinking things over carefully. Despite being a trainer, this one was different given that he actually tackled a Pokemon to save him instead of having his Pokemon do so, then the opinions of his Pokemon were another thing, Bulbasaur. He made his decision and nodded to join him. All right then, let me just, Naruto reached for a Pokeball. Bulbasaur called out to him Bulba Bulbasaur. He stretched a vine to point at Pikachu who blinked in confusion. It seems to me that Bulbasaur wants you to battle it with your Pikachu, said Melanie. I see, how about it buddy? Asked Naruto. Pikachu tipped his hat with a grin Pikachu. Everyone moved over to the clearing near the lake with Naruto and Pikachu facing Bulbasaur with the others stood at the edge of the clearing to watch. Bulbasaur was the one to make the first move as he started using Razor Leaf to attack Pikachu use Thundershock on those leaves, Pikachu. Pikachu blasted the incoming projectiles till they're burnt up. 
Bulbasaur then switched to using Vine Whip to attack evade those vines with agility. Pikachu began moving around about at high speed as if teleporting, dodging the vine's time for some offense, use quick attack. Pikachu rapidly closed in on Bulbasaur and slammed into him before he could react. Using agility to avoid attacks then applying the increased speed to quick attack for a rapid offense, Naruto continues to surprise me, said Brock, being quite impressed. It's never boring watching Naruto, said Leaf fondly, recording the battle with her camera. Bulbasaur recovered from the sudden attack then aimed its bulb to expel blue spores towards Pikachu. That's sleep powder, watch out, Leaf called out in alert. Naruto's mind raced for a solution before coming up with one when he glanced downwards Pikachu, iron tail towards the ground. Pikachu complied as he leapt into the air with his tail taking on a metallic sheen before descending to slam it into the ground, throwing up a thick cloud of dust which mixed with spores, render it ineffective glad that worked. However, something shot out from the dust cloud and wrapped around Pikachu, revealing to be green vines from Bulbasaur who proceeded to slam Pikachu into the ground repeatedly. Do something Naruto or Pikachu won't last much longer, said Brock urgently. Okay Pikachu, time to reveal a new move, use Thunderbolt, Pikachu grabbed the vines with his cheeks sparking as he unleashed a stronger blast of electricity which traveled along the vines and zapped Bulbasaur badly for him to collapse to the ground. Now's my chance, go Pokeball. Naruto flung a Pokeball for it to hit Bulbasaur and suck him inside of it. Everyone watched in tension as the Pokeball rocked back and forth until it chimed to signal a successful capture. Naruto picked up the Pokeball with a smile we've gotten ourselves a new comrade. Hi Pikachu. Pikachu cheered happily with a victory sign along with the other Pokemon cheering at having a new member of the team. Looks like I made the right choice after all, thought Melanie, watching the trainer and his Pokemon react to having Bulbasaur with them now please take care of Bulbasaur for me. Naruto in response I will, and that's a promise. Apparently, Naruto wasn't the only one getting a Pokemon as Oddish wanted to go with Leaf after coming to like her and minded Melanie's words as well. In the end, Leaf got the Oddish that she always wanted. Soon it was time for them to resume their journey with Melanie seeing them off but not before Leaf suggesting that she gets into contact with the Pokemon Rangers who could help her sanction the hidden village and provide better protection much to Brock's relief before setting out. Asterisk 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 red asterisk asterisk. Hum, looks like we're finally getting somewhere, said Leaf, looking at the map on her Pokager carefully. Really? asked Naruto. Yeah, if we're continue to follow this trail, it will take us to Route 24 which will lead us straight to Vermilion City. Even better, there's a Pokemon Center along the way too. Brock smiled at the good news looks like things are turning out right for us. We could heal our Pokemon and resupply there, let's go. After several minutes of hiking, Naruto and Ko caught sight of a black silhouette from a distance and curiously made their way over to it. A closer look reveals it to be Rock Spire with a small Pokemon sitting on top of it, it was the sight of the Pokemon which surprised them with Naruto scanning with his Pokedex like always. Charmander, from the time it is born, a flame burns at the tip of its tail. Its life would end if the flame were to go out. Closing square bracket. A Charmander. Here I thought encountering a Bulbasaur was something unusual, said Naruto, looking at one of the Kanto starters before him. Seeing it makes me wonder how Red is doing on his journey, said Leaf thoughtfully. Oh Red's from Pallet Town, he came to challenge the gym and won a badge. He proved to be good in battle although he didn't talk much, said Brock with a hum. Guys, this Charmander doesn't look too good. Naruto pointed out with a small frown upon seeing said Pokemon breathing rather raggedly and the flame on its tail being unusually small. You're right, it makes me wonder why it's out here, said Brock. At those words, Pikachu hopped off Naruto's shoulder and climbed up the rock to speak to Charmander. After some exchange of words between the two Pokemon, Pikachu jumped back down and returned to Naruto and the others to relay the information to them. In spite of not understanding Pokemon talk, Naruto was able to figure out what his buddy was trying to say. According to Pikachu, Charmander was told to wait there by his trainer until he comes back for him, said Naruto. It makes me wonder just how long he had been waiting to be this worn out, said Leaf, looking at Charmander with concern. Same here, 
but we could give it some food and berries for the meantime till his trainer returns, said Naruto taking off his bag and reaching inside for the contents. Brock nodded in approval that's a good idea. Naruto climbed up the rock and placed a small pile of Pokemon food and Oran berries next to Charmander here you go, hopefully this would sat you until your trainer returns. Char, Mander, the fire Pokemon weakly thanked him. You're welcome. He jumped back down to rejoin the others okay guys, let's go. The group resumed their trek along the trail with the Charmander watching them leave until they disappeared from its sight. The group noticed that the clouds above them were starting to darken which signaled that rain will soon start, causing them to hasten their steps until catching sight of the Pokemon Center ahead much to their relief and quick ran over right as the rain finally started. After settling down on a free table, Leaf went over to the cafeteria to get some soup for her and the others so as to warm themselves up from the cold weather. She returned with a tray holding the bowls of soup when she noticed that Naruto was staring at the window with a lost look in his eyes. What's the matter, Naruto? asked Leaf. I'm just wondering if the trainer had picked that Charmander in time before the rain started, this is the only trail leading to here which meant that the trainer had to have come here after us but I haven't seen anyone come in yet, said Naruto with concern. Pika. Pikachu felt the same way. I'm sure that Charmander was picked up by the trainer by now and maybe found shelter elsewhere, Leaf responded positively, placing the bowls of soup on the table and sitting next to Naruto to place a hand on his shoulder I'm sure things will be fine. Naruto smiled softly thanks Leaf, the girl beamed happily in response. They were suddenly snapped out of their reverie by the sounds of laughter and turned towards a group of boys who were around a blue-haired boy wearing a pair of sunglasses on his forehead with a pile of pokeballs on a table in front of him next to a bonfire. Man Damien, you sure got a lot of Pokemon here, said one of the boys. The blue-haired boy puffed his chest out in arrogance of course, I've got the best collection. No doubt about that, by the way, Damien, didn't you have a Charmander before? asked another boy. Hearing this made Naruto and Ko snap their heads sharply towards, feelings of dread beginning to form in their hearts as they hoped that they were talking about some other Charmander. Damien scoffed in response I had one but the thing was so weak that it couldn't even beat the weakest of opponents. How could he say that? Any Pokemon can be strong in the hands of a good trainer, Naruto's a perfect example. Said Leaf angrily, the person in question was growing angrier by the second. So, what did you do to it? asked a boy. Damien led off a shrug A. I left on some rock in the woods, Naruto's hands gripped the edge of the table tightly that thing is so stupid, no matter what I do to it, it keeps on following me. I finally got rid of it by promising that I'd come back for it, and it totally fell for it hook, line and sinker. No doubt it's still waiting for me right now in the rain. So that means Charmander had been abandoned, said Brock angrily. How could he do such a thing? Leaf was upset then she noticed Naruto raise from his seat with a dark shadow over his eyes and Naruto. He approached the group who were still laughing over such a cruel action done to an innocent Pokemon. Ha ha ha, it's probably still out there, wagging its tail around, said Damien arrogantly. The boys laughed in agreement yeah, it'll probably go out by now. The next they knew was that Damien was grabbed by the collar of his shirt and lifted into the air they turned to see a blonde boy holding the guy up with one hand and a livid look in his eyes. Hey, what's your problem? Damien demanded. Naruto then spoke with thinly veiled rage in his voice my problem. My problem. You wanna know what my problem is? You willingly abandoned a Pokemon just because you weren't winning any battles, that's what my damn problem is. It's none of your business. Everyone here knows full well that a Charmander dies when the flame on its tail goes out, what you've done isn't just abandonment but borderline murder of an innocent Pokemon. Trainers around murmured and or nodded in complete agreement with Naruto's statement. So what, that Pokemon should have been stronger without me having to waste my time raising it myself. Damien retorted. Raising a Pokemon is the best part about being a Pokemon trainer. Said Brock angrily. You wish, it's the most boring part of the job. And besides what are you gonna do about it? Taking you to Officer Jenny for starters, making sure that you never touch a Pokemon ever again, said Naruto. Damien sneered and with what proof? Leaf spoke up with a smirk with this, she tapped her Pokager and it began to play back Damien's voice, 
making said person pale with fear it's a good thing that I had a voice recording app installed into my Pokager just for moments like these. Naruto tossed Damien bodily onto the couch I'm going to rescue Charmander, I hope that everyone makes sure that this disgusting excuse for a human being and his friends don't go anywhere until the authorities come and get them. Don't worry about it, we'll make sure that they won't move an inch until Officer Jenny arrives, a trainer spoke up with the others starting to surround Damien and the others. We're coming with you, said Brock. No need, I intend on using that to get to Charmander and back quickly, said Naruto, putting on a raincoat with Pikachu climbing to his shoulders. Okay Naruto, and please be careful, said Leaf. Nodding in affirmation, Naruto exited from the Pokemon Center and began running along the trail towards where Charmander is time for some speed. The bracelet transformed into its gauntlet form as he took out a Pidgeotto card from the holster and inserted it into the gauntlet. Attack mode. Quick attack. Naruto's running speed sharply increased with his body leaving behind a white trail of energy in his wake. He soon reached the rock spire to find Charmander trying to protecting the flame on its tail with a large leaf albeit to little effect and was being attacked by a trio of Spearow. Pikachu, scare those Spearow away with a low-level thunderbolt. Said Naruto urgently, Pikachu leapt off his shoulder to fire weakened blasts of electricity which was enough to drive away the Spearow for Naruto to get to Charmander and wrap him with the raincoat oh man, the flame on his tail is even smaller than before. We gotta hurry. He dashed back to the Pokemon Center and barged through the door to find Nurse Joy and Chansey waiting for him with a gurney nearby which he placed the Pokemon upon before they whisked it away to the emergency room for treatment. The trainers gasped in shock when they saw the state which Charmander and glared at Damien and his cronies, inches away from calling on their Pokemon to attack them. Naruto and Ko sat in front of the emergency room, waiting in tension and praying in hearts that Charmander pulls through. As time went on, Brock and Leaf fell asleep but Naruto remained with wide awake, his nerves preventing any form of sleep from taking over. Eventually, the lights went off and Nurse Joy emerged from the room for Naruto to confront her. How is Charmander? asked Naruto urgently. Nurse Joy was silent for a few moments before speaking with a smile on her face I'm happy to say that Charmander will be okay, he just needs lots of rest, hearing this brought relief upon Naruto and Pikachu. Oh thank goodness, Naruto dropped back onto the bench, the tension leaving his body. Pikachu, the electric Pokemon was as relieved as his trainer. Now's the time for you to rest as well. No doubt that you strained yourself running through the rain to save Charmander, Nurse Joy pointed out. Naruto nodded in affirmation I will, thanks very much, he woke the others up and relayed the news to them before going to sleep in their rooms and waking up the next day. Officer Jenny and a couple of policemen arrived early morning and received testimony from the surrounding trainers as well as the audio recording from Leaf's Pokager. This guaranteed that Damien and his gang will have their trainer licenses revoked. Afterwards, Naruto inquired from Nurse Joy if he could see Charmander which she was more than happy to guide him to the room where Charmander was resting, they went inside to find the Pokemon awake albeit a bit confused. Hey there, Charmander, Naruto called out, Charmander turned to see the group and recognized them especially the blonde one who saved him yesterday from the rain with the Pokemon waving at him. We're glad to see you're okay after what happened yesterday, said Leaf with a smile. Char. Charmander tilted his head at what they meant. Let us explain to you what happened, Brock proceeded to tell the young fire Pokemon what had occurred and the end results of today, everyone sympathized with the Pokemon upon seeing his disheartened expression about his former trainer's true colors. Naruto then spoke up before you start blaming yourself for this, it's no one's fault but Damien's. You were nothing more than loyal to him like you were supposed to and yet he didn't value you like every self-respecting Pokemon trainer was supposed to. You almost died because of his ignorance. Leaf continued everyone in the Pokemon Center were angry with what he did as it goes against everything as a Pokemon trainer, that's why we've made sure he would never do something like this ever again. Which is why Charmander, I want to ask if you'd like to come with me, become my Pokemon. I promise to take care of you, train you to be the strong that I know you can be. I'll do everything I can to make you happy and your loyalty truly worthwhile. Charmander was surprised to hear this trainer who saved him wanting him to be his Pokemon, but at the time he was unsure. Some parts of him is still loyal to Damien and also afraid to be hurt again. But this human showed more concern for him unlike Damien, he could give him a chance. 
Seeing that Charmander was still hesitant, Pikachu reached for Naruto's belt and tapped one of the Pokeballs, making it open up to reveal Bulbasaur much to everyone's confusion. I think I see what's going on. Pikachu called Bulbasaur to speak to Charmander since he was abandoned too, said Brock. Might as well leave it to you two then, we'll be waiting outside till you need us, Naruto got up from his seat and left the room with the others in tow for the Pokemon to have personal conversation amongst themselves. Asterisk 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 Pokemon translation on asterisk asterisk, I've heard from Pikachu about you and your trainer, frankly I think you're better off without him and he deserved what he got, said Bulbasaur bluntly. Charmander frowned in response how could you say that, you wouldn't understand since you're the trainer's first Pokemon. Pikachu raised a paw actually, I'm Naruto's starter Pokemon. Huh, but I thought Bulbasaur is his Pokemon. I understand your confusion since a normal trainer would have either you, me or a Squirtle but that isn't the case for Naruto. My trainer abandoned me a long time ago and I was serving as a guardian for a hidden village until I meet Naruto and Pikachu. At first I was distrustful of them but later came to like them and gave being a trainer's Pokemon another shot. So far, I'm enjoying my time spent with them, Bulbasaur smiled as he thought on how Naruto had been treating him with kindness and respect. Is, is he really a nice trainer? Asked Charmander curiously. I'll go as far as to say that he's the best and that I'm glad to be his Pokemon, said Pikachu happily. Charmander bowed his head in thought it must be nice. Damien never praised me or cared that much. Yet another one of the many reasons he's not worth being your trainer, I implore you to join us and be with Naruto. It will be the best decision you've ever made, said Bulbasaur, not wanting Charmander to suffer neglect as much as he did. Charmander hummed in thought for a few moments then in that case, oh. Asterisk 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 Pokemon translator off asterisk asterisk. Pikachu went to call Naruto inside the ward with Brock and Leaf coming inside as well to meet with Charmander and Bulbasaur. So, have you decided on what to do now? Asked Naruto. Charmander nodded in affirmation Char Charmander, he pointed at one of the Pokeballs on the blonde trainer's belt. You'd like to be with me? Asked Naruto, wanting to clarify. Char Char, smiling happily. Naruto took one of the Pokeballs and enlarged it before holding it out to Charmander I promise that you won't regret this choice, welcome to the family. Charmander in response then tapped the Pokeball to be sucked into it, allowing capture without a single struggle. Naruto grinned at Pikachu and Bulbasaur you can be pretty persuasive from the looks of things, Pikachu rubbed the back of his head sheepishly while Bulbasaur simply smiled in response. Let's inform Nurse Joy of what happened then we'll be back on our way towards Vermilion City, said Brock with a smile at how things had turned out. Sure enough, Nurse Joy was happy to hear of the good news and had them promised to take good care of Charmander, some of the trainers who had waited behind to learn of the Pokemon's state of health congratulated and wished them good luck on their journey as the group set off with a new member of the team in tow. Asterisk 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 blue asterisk asterisk, looks like someone's feeling peppy today said Leaf, looking at Naruto walking ahead of them whilst whistling a song he heard back home with Pikachu nodding in tune to the song. How couldn't he, given that he now has a Bulbasaur and a Charmander on his team, something which can be classified as an extremely rare occurrence, Brock pointed out to the only female in the group. Naruto turned to face them while walking backwards with a foxy grin he's right you know, I really gotta remember which side of the bed I woke up on to be this lucky. I'm gonna help those two alongside others to be the very best they can be. Leaf rolled her eyes in amusement all you need now is a squirtle and you've got yourself a complete set of Kanto starters. There's hoping for that one, right now I'm on cloud 9 and nothing's gonna bring me down. Suddenly, Naruto's foot sunk a bit into the ground much to his confusion. Brock and Leaf went to check on him when the ground gave way underneath their feet and they feel screaming into some sort of pit. Ow! I think I landed on my head, said Brock. Should have known better than to challenge Murphy's law, Naruto, Leaf groaned out. Naruto responded painfully tell me about it, oh my back. Pika, Pikachu shook his head to clear the pain from it. Hearing snickering from above, the group looked up to see five blue heads wearing black sunglasses peering over the edge of the pitfall and laughing at them, giving the trio an idea of what's going on. So, this pitfall is nothing more than a prank, said Naruto. A rotten one that's for sure, Leaf added with a frown. 
The five continued to laugh at Naruto and the others until the sound of sirens as well as the sound of a vehicle's engine was being heard which caused them to quickly run off. What was that all about? Asked Brock. Naruto shrugged in response I don't know, but let's focus on getting out of here. That was when someone peered over the edge, revealing to be Officer Jenny are you okay down there? We are now, said Brock in a lovestruck tone but Leaf smacked the back of his head. Pull up your love blinders and pay more attention to getting out of this hole, Leaf looked at Brock in annoyance. After helping them out of the pitfall, Officer Jenny took some yellow tape and used it to form a barrier around the hole to prevent anyone else from falling into it I don't even to guess that you had been victims of the Squirtle Squad's latest pranks. Squirtle Squad? Asked Leaf curiously. They are a group of Squirtle who had been abandoned by their trainers, so they cause havoc all over town to make things difficult for the people living here, Jenny explained. Naruto rubbed the bridge nose of his nose in exasperation sigh this again, I'm getting really tired of hearing about this same thing over and over again. Jenny blinked in confusion uh, what do you mean by that? Brock was the one to clarify let's just say that we had recently met two Pokemon who were in the same situation until Naruto took them in. The officer nodded both in understanding and approval before continuing to speak to be honest, I find it rather saddening. If they had someone to care about them, they wouldn't have turned out so bad, she got on board her motorcycle and revved the engine a few times take care of yourselves and be careful, then she rode off towards the town. Officer Jenny, the beauty of justice, Brock swooned as said person rode away from them. Naruto shook Brock by the shoulder snap out of it, Brock. You need to quit acting that way. He's right, girls don't like guys who act like that, said an annoyed Leaf. Brock slumped in depression at their words oh. Anyways, let's head on over to the Pokemon Center to get our Pokemon checked up before resupplying our provisions at the Mart, said Naruto. And don't forget dinner too, Leaf added. That too. A short trip to the Pokemon Center to revitalize their Pokemon then purchasing provisions from the Mart with Naruto buying something in particular the trio decided to take a short break on a grassy slope next to a river. Brock was reading through a book and Leaf was working on her blog on her laptop whilst Naruto simply laid on the grass and stared blankly towards the sky with Pikachu lying next to him. Say Naruto, what do you have planned for the Vermilion City Gym? Asked Leaf as she continued to type on her computer from what I've been seeing online, the gym leader deals in electric types and seems to be very strong that several trainers steer clear from the place. Naruto hummed thoughtfully well, for starters, Pikachu will be involved since electric types won't be that effective but I'll need to keep a guard up for whatever attacks that gym leader would have prepared for that factor. I haven't decided on who else to add to remaining but I'll need to work on teaching the others moves which would definitely help along the way. Good idea, you've been working on physical conditioning and move proficiency with the newest additions so far, Brock pointed out to the others. True that, I'll research on the Pokedex T. Boom. Their conservation was suddenly disrupted by an explosion, taking them completely by surprise as it was rather unexpected. What was that? asked Leaf in a panic. Brock looked around to see black smoke rising from a nearby forest it seemed to have come from the forest near here. Naruto sprang to his with Pikachu climbing to his shoulder let's go. Hastily packing their things, they ran towards where the smoke was coming from. Naruto's aura senses suddenly picked up signatures of Pokemon as well as a human which seems to be in pursuit of them. Keep your guard up guys, we've got trouble ahead. Naruto called out. They emerged into a clearing where there's a cave nearby, there they saw a group of Squirtle being attacked by a human dressed in punk clothing and commanding a Magneton to attack them with a jeep parked nearby and a net in hand. Today's my lucky day, a group of Squirtle just ripe for the catching, said the man greedily. That guy must be a Pokemon poacher, said Leaf with a frown. And he's after those Squirtle. Brock added, not gonna happen. Naruto then yelled out to the poacher hey, leave those Squirtle alone. This caught the poacher's attention as he turned towards them with a look of annoyance beat it kids, don't get in the way of a payday if you know what's good for you. Well Pokemon aren't things for you to sell for income, said Leaf, coming to seriously dislike Pokemon poachers and thieves like Team Rocket. TCH, talking like you know how the world works. Looks I'm gonna have teach you a lesson. Naruto walked to stand between the Squirtle and the Poacher with a Pokeball in hand I won't let you hurt them any more than they already were. Charmander, 
I choose you. He threw the Pokeball to call on the most recent member of the Team Charmander, I need your help to protect the Squirtle from that poacher. Char Char. Charmander nodded with determination his eyes to help his new trainer. Music start. Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green Aust. Battle. Trainer battle. We'll see about that. Magneton, use Thundershock. The poacher called out. Magneton launched a blast of electricity towards Charmander. Naruto quickly reacted Charmander dodge it by jumping sideways then retaliate with Ember. Charmander immediately complied to the command and opened his mouth to launch hot sparkles of flame towards Magneton but the Magnet Pokemon moved out of the way. That weak attack won't touch my Magneton, use Sonic Boom. The Magneton began firing shockwaves with Charmander leaping from side to side to avoid the incoming projectiles. Don't lose heart Charmander, use Smokescreen to conceal yourself. Charmander opened his mouth to breath out a thick cloud of black smoke before jumping into it to hide himself from the attacks. The poacher scoffed at the move nice try punk but that changes nothing. Magneton, use Euro Ball to blow that smoke away. Magneton spun rapidly like a top whilst enshrouded in silver energy as it blew through the smoke and slammed into Charmander, knocking him. Charmander, you okay buddy? Naruto called out in concern. Charmander shook his head before getting back to his feet and was ready to continue Char. Steel type moves aren't that effective against a fire type like Charmander, just need to step things up a bit, Naruto muttered thoughtfully. All right Magneton, use Euro Ball again. Charmander, wait until the last moment to dodge then use Flamethrower. Charmander focused on his opponent as it approached before jumping over to land behind the Pokemon then attacked with a powerful stream of flames, inflicting a lot of damage on it. The poacher growled in annoyance why you, Magneton end this by using try attack. The Magneton began to prepare for its attack. Charmander, get ready to use flamethrower, said Naruto. Charmander nodded in affirmation and stood at the ready. Try attack is my Magneton's strongest attack there's no way you can stop it. Fire now, Magneton launched the attack of fire, ice and electricity towards Charmander. Charmander, use flamethrower right where you stand. Charmander obeyed without hesitation to fire a stream of flames right which launched him high into the air like a rocket much to the shock of everyone watching. By using flamethrower, Charmander was able to dodge that attack much more effectively than when he would have jumped. Just how creative can Naruto be? asked Brock in wonder. You should have seen the pranks he used to do back home, you'd think it was done by someone much older, said Leaf. All right, end this with one more flamethrower. Naruto called with Charmander doing just that, engulfing the Magneton in flames before dying out to reveal it lying on the ground, scorched and knocked out. Music end. It's our victory, Naruto declared with a foxy grin. Char Char. Charmander jumped up and down in joy. The poacher returned the downed Magneton with an aggravated look in his eyes stupid Pokemon, guess I'll have to take care of you brats myself. He ran over to the jeep and brought out a bazooka which he then took aim at Naruto and the Squirtle. Naruto, watch out, Brock yelled in distress. In Naruto's eyes, it was like time started to slow down as he subconsciously channeled aura through his feet then he dashed forward at speeds faster than when he used one of the cards. He was soon in front of the poacher to grab the bazooka, redirecting it to fire away from everyone before knocking him out with a powerful punch to the stomach. Naruto looked down at the unconscious poacher with disdain that's enough from a sore loser like you. Naruto, are you okay? Asked Leaf as she and the others went over to check on him. I'm okay, it's like my body went on autopilot when I saw him trying to attack us with that bazooka and I wanted to stop him from hurting us, said Naruto with a thoughtful look on his face. Either, everything is fine now, said Brock, then he smelled something do you smell that? It's like something burning. Look over there, there's a fire. Leaf pointed for everyone to see lots of smoke rising to the sky. It must have been from when the poacher shot the bazooka, we gotta stop else everyone will be in danger. Then it's a good thing that we already have a solution. Naruto turned to the Squirtle squad if you guys work together, you can extinguish the fire with your water gun. Squirtle Squirtle, the leader nodded in understanding and turned to the rest who were ready to help considering that these humans came here to save them from the Pokemon poacher, especially the one with the spiky blonde hair. 
The Squirtle Squad worked together to put out the flames whilst Naruto and the others checked around to make sure that none of the wild Pokemon living in the forest were in any form of danger. Soon afterwards, they took the poacher to Officer Jenny and reported what had happened. This put the Squirtle Squad in a much better light to the townspeople that they were awarded with a certificate and even given the honorable position of a firefighting team. Leaf wasted no time in posting this which led to her getting lots of hits online and improved her blog's popularity. But it appears that not everyone was truly satisfied. Naruto and the others were back on the road towards Vermilion City when the former suddenly stopped much to everyone's sans Pikachu's confusion. What's the matter, Naruto? asked Leaf. We've got a follower. Naruto glanced over his shoulder with a small smile. Everyone looked behind to see a Pokemon running to catch up to them. It's the leader of the Squirtle Squad. I can only guess the reason why he came out here, said Brock in a knowing tone. Would you like to come with us? asked Naruto. Squirtle Squirtle. The Squirtle nodded eagerly and took off the sunglasses to reveal eyes which shone with renewed hope as he ran over and leapt into Naruto's arms. Welcome to the family Squirtle, said Naruto smilingly. Hi Pikachu. Pikachu cheered at the addition of yet another member of the team. So, you have all three Kanto starters within a month. That's got to be a world record, said Leaf in a joking manner. Yeah. But remember that you already have six Pokemon on you, one of them would have to be sent back to the lab in order to make room, Brock pointed out. I recall, I think I'll send Butterfree back for now. Professor Oak had told me that the Pokedex has a link to the system which allows me to transfer or exchange Pokemon, gotta love technology at times like this. Naruto took out his Pokedex and interacted with the transfer system with Butterfree's Pokeball disappearing from his belt leaving behind an open slot before taking out an empty Pokeball from one of his pant pockets now then, I officially welcome you to the group. Squirtle, Squirtle tapped the Pokeball to be sucked into it and allowed himself to be captured without a struggle. You're really lucky to get these three Pokemon, said Brock. Naruto shook his head it's not only luck, it's also because we were being proper trainers. Leaf nodded in agreement that's true, now let's get going. Later that night, the group had set up camp to rest and were currently having dinner. Elsewhere, the Pokemon were having a conversation whilst having their dinner. Asterisk 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 Pokemon translator on asterisk asterisk. Whoa, so you guys were abandoned too before Naruto took you in. Dude, that's so weird, said Squirtle in wonder. Yeah, I wouldn't even be alive if it wasn't for Naruto. He's a great trainer, said Charmander happily. Bulbasaur smiled as well he proved to me that there are still good humans out there. Told you Naruto's the best, said Pikachu proudly. You know, I can't help but see some sort of irony in all this, said Pidgeotto. What do you mean? asked Squirtle curiously. Scyther responded to the question what she means to say is that these three Pokemon were abandoned by trainers who failed to see their worth and now with a trainer who truly values them. Almost as if the world guided three lost ones to a single sanctuary in Naruto. Whoa, didn't think that you'd be into all that Zen stuff, said Squirtle, receiving an annoyed look from Scyther. They were then disrupted when Naruto called out to some of them. Asterisk 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 Pokemon translator off asterisk asterisk. Bulbasaur, Charmander, Squirtle, could you guys come over? Naruto called out to the mention three as they came over to their new trainer I almost forgot that I bought something for you three. He reached into his backpack and brought out three bandanas with each colored red with a fire theme, blue with a water theme and green with a grass theme much to the surprise of the three Pokemon. I saw these when we were shopping and figured that I need something to make you all unique and bought them. They're durable and proofed against Pokemon attacks so you won't worry about them getting damaged, come so I can put them on you. Naruto folded the green bandana into a choker style to tie it around Bulbasaur so the fabric won't drag along the ground. With Charmander, the red bandana was worn around the neck in a way that the tied knot is at the back and the tip is in front. And Squirtle had his blue bandana around like a scarf with the long tip dangling from the side of his neck. I gotta say, you three are looking pretty spiffy, Naruto smiled, seeing the Pokemon marveling at each other. Next thing he knew was that he was tackled to the ground the teary-eyed Charmander and Squirtle while Bulbasaur smiled in gratitude ha ha ha, I get the idea, you really like your presence. He hugged them back. Leaf was busy snapping pictures of them all, what a cute moment. 
It kinda makes me consider getting some accessories for my Pokemon. I'm sure Clefairy would love a cute bow to wear on one of her ears. Brock watched on with feelings of nostalgia seeing this reminds me of the time spent with my brothers and sisters, now I'm starting to feel homesick. As everyone were enjoying themselves, they were unaware of the soft glow coming within Naruto's card holster where three brand new cards now laid inside, representing the bond formed between Naruto and the three Kanto starters. Thanks.